The final round of the NASCAR Wheel and Modified Tour finds four drivers vying for the championship title. John McKennedy in car 79 holds an advantage of six points over three challengers in this final event of the season. Ron Silk is a former champion looking for his second title six points behind. Then Justin Bonsignor, big winner on the tour this season, 11 points back in the third position and fourth in the championship chase. The most recent winner, Eric Goodale, 13 points back. And the starting grid parked on the front straightaway of the 75-year-old Martinsville Speedway in Virginia, getting set to launch. The Virginia is for Racing Lovers 200. And some surprises in qualifying before we start to introduce to you all of the position starters in this 35-car field. We're going to talk about the championship contenders and how all four drivers in contention for the NASCAR Wheel and Modified Series title have qualified. It was Ron Silk who comes in second in the points chase from Norwalk, Connecticut, who was the best of the championship qualifiers. He will launch from fourth on the grid. Points leader John McKennedy, the Massachusetts driver, qualified ninth quick. Justin Bonsignor, third in the title chase, a three-time winner this season. He will start from 12th position. And your most recent winner, fourth in the points chase, still only 13 points out of the lead. That's Riverhead, New York's Eric Goodale. He will go from 15th position on this grid. 35 cars and 200 laps will close out the 2022 NASCAR Wheeland Modified Tour. It's 16 events, and this is the 16th and final. In other divisions of NASCAR, various playoff formats will lead to a championship battle between four drivers. And here in the NASCAR Wheel and Modified Tour in 2022, it happened naturally. Drivers that are 13 points, 11 points, and six points behind, all mathematically in the hunt to earn the series championship in 2022.
29 and the 28th position starter is J.B. Fortin from Holtzville, New York, steering car number 34. In the 29th position, it's Gary McDonald, the New Yorker who steers car number 26 and the 30th place starter from East Haven, Connecticut, veteran Walter Sutcliffe Jr. in car number 78. 31st position, former most popular driver winner on the tour from Wakefield, New Hampshire, Melissa Fivefield. And starting in 32nd position, former tour champion from Howell, New Jersey in car number 99, Jamie the Jet Tomano. In car number 24, the New Jersey ace starting in 33rd position is Andrew Krause. And driving car number 55 starting from 34th position, it's Jeremy Gerstner from Wesley Chapel, Florida. 35th and final starter, it's Brian Doza from Alexandria, Louisiana, and that sets your field for the 200-lap grind that will bring to a close the 2022 NASCAR Whelan Modified Tour. The Virginia is for Racing Lovers 200 from the 75-year-old Martinsville Speedway here in Virginia. This facility is known as the Paper Clip. Long straightaways and tight concrete corners when the machines parade through the next corner, you will see to the inside curbing, the red and white line indicates about a six or eight inch curb that goes up. These modifieds will not be able to safely keep a couple of wheels onto that curb, but we know that drivers will be putting tire marks across it as the race moves along. In talking to the four championship contenders before qualifying this afternoon, I asked them if the preparation for this race is any different, knowing that they have a solid chance at claiming the series title. And all four drivers told me the same thing. Every event here at Martinsville requires a little bit of extra work on the braking system. Those long straightaways into those tight turns mean that the brakes are going to overheat and extra duct work and cooling is always required for the brakes. But other than the standard Martinsville tune-up, they said their preparation all week long was as normal for any race on the tour. And now, Pace Car heads to the infield. 16th and final event of 2022, and waving the green flag to get tonight's race started. It is Val Guffey, the Director of Consumer and Partner Services for the Virginia Tourism Corporation. And out of turn number four, the NASCAR Whelan Modified Tour is underway from Martinsville, Virginia. All 35 machines enter turn number one, and Matt Hirschman grabs the early lead. Hirschman in car 60 was the fastest qualifier and launches out from the pole with Jimmy Blewett in tow. Blewett, the driver this weekend for Tommy Baldwin racing as three different pilots have taken that machine to victory lane in 2022. He rides in the second spot. Down the back straightaway, single file action through the top five, and we see in fifth position, it's the 16 of Silk, Ron Silk, championship contender, one of the drivers to watch. Kyle Von Senor, the 22, right beside, right behind, I should say, Silk. And there you see that 64 machine. Austin Beers, the rookie of the year for 2022. Beers goes wheel to wheel with Hossfeld in the two machine. That battle right behind Silk as, again, we're going to be focusing some of our attention tonight on those four championship contenders. It's amazing that 16 events could come down to a 13-point gap between four drivers as we see Walter Sutcliffe off the pace there. He will head to the pits. The green flag remains flying over the speedway. Great celebration of 75 years of racing here at Martinsville and a battle for second to second place it does in fact change hands. The 7NY driven by Jimmy Blewett is now back to third as Ronnie will sorry the 53 car Corey LaJoy that is a bunch of black race cars gathered together there at the front of the pack Williams just behind the seven of Blewett and now taking over second position. It's Corey LaJoy, the North Carolina resident who's a regular on the Cup Series. He's no stranger to modified racing in his homeland up in New England. These are the cars of choice, and he's driven modifieds before, looking for his first tour win, and pulls right up to the rear bumper of Pennsylvania's Matt Hirschman. Hirschman, a second-generation driver. His father, Tony, a many-time champion of the NASCAR Wheel and Modified Tour. And out in front now with just about a car length separating Corey LaJoy in car number 53 from your race leader, Matt Hirschman. Hirschman has had a very successful 2022 racing season. He's 
won unsanctioned races with this modified. He's run Race of Champions series events and been victorious numerous times on that tour as well. His only win in the NASCAR Tour was the opening round of 2022 during Florida Speed Weeks back in February at the new Smyrna Speedway. So he's hoping to bookend this season with wins to start and conclude the season. And there is Silk with a challenger to his outside. That's Williams falling back just a little bit in the field. Williams had an outstanding qualifying run. He started third. But now Silk in the 16 car takes a position away. And the 22 of Kyle Bond Senior about to do the same. Up front, the lead battle gets heated. Corey LaJoy took a peek to the inside of Hirschman. Another peek there as they exit turn four and reach the scoring line. It is lap 10 of 200. It's been Hirschman all the way, but these two drivers have pulled away by a good 15 car lengths over Blewett in third spot. There's Blewett in the Tommy Baldwin racing entry. Then Silk and Vaughn Senior, we were just discussing them. That white number two is Chuck Hosfeld. We'll talk more about him as the race goes along. But Hirschman out in front, and then a little gap back to the seven of Blewett. Corey LaJoy in that 53 car has competed in every form of NASCAR Touring Series racing. And as the field goes by, we see we have a spin exiting turn number four, a car backwards at the start of the front straightaway. As we're working lap 12, the caution is displayed for the very first time here in the Virginia is for Racing Lovers 200. And it appears to be the 97 of Brian Doza that has gone around. Doza, the former ARCA series competitor, the Louisiana resident, goes around and we see some smoke i believe that's tire smoke i'm not sure if that's a mechanical failure but unable to pull away from the scene of his own spin here doza started the event in the 35th and final position and brings out the caution here on lap number 12. safety workers will check with the veteran campaigner he's made two starts in the nascar wheel and modified tour coming into tonight in 2022. as the leaders roll past the Start finish line to begin working lap 13 under the caution. Matt Hirschman, your race leader in car number 60, the Northampton, Pennsylvania veteran. And he has won races all over the Northeast all season long. He competes in several different types of modified racing, including open and weekly competition in Pennsylvania. He travels with the Race of Champions Tour. And in only a handful of starts in the NASCAR Wheelan Tour this season, he's been impressive. Had a dominating win to kick off the tour in 2022 back in Florida Speed Weeks. And he's not accustomed to racing with Corey LaJoy, the driver in second spot. LaJoy making some great early moves as with only 12 green flag laps contested, LaJoy in that 53 machine climbed from fifth to second. And he very, very quickly made a pass of Blewett. It started out that Blewett was maybe the only car to hang with race leader Hirschman, but as soon as LaJoy caught him and passed the 7NY, it was a two-car breakaway of only Hirschman and LaJoy. LaJoy in the curb records number 53 car, making a rare modified start, but he's certainly not a rookie to these machines. He has some laps in modifieds previously, seeking his first win on the tour. In third spot, we mentioned Blewett, the New Jersey veteran in the Tommy Baldwin racing entry. In the fourth spot, the championship contender coming into tonight just six points back. There's the gray number 16 of Ron Silk. Silk. Oh, we've got a car headed down pit road. Nacella in the 92 made a quick stop. He goes back out onto the speedway. Nacella has a win this season on the tour. He comes in 10th in the championship points battle. So trying to maintain a top 10 spot, an early pit stop may not be what the doctor ordered for Nacella in the 92 machine. Nacella has had a great couple of seasons. He's really come into his own as a force to reckon with on this tour. 2021, he really turned some heads and a victory this season as well as that top 10 competitor will now go to the tail of a very long line with 35 cars in competition. And there we see the number 97 machine of Doza. So all 35 cars, except for Sutcliffe, who we saw pulling to the pits earlier, 34 cars remain on the speedway. Not good news for Nacella, who's going to have to pass many of those to maintain his position in the top 10 of the championship points chase. So here on lap number 15, green flag waves once again here at Martinsville, and Blue it takes the inside line, trying to reclaim second position from Corey LaJoy. 
Hirschman again out to a lead of a couple of car lengths. He is all by himself, then two by two through the field. LaJoy from the outside lane seems to be able to hold off the challenge of the number seven of Lewitt. Jimmy Blewett, the New Jersey ace who built a career for himself with success at the Wall Stadium Speedway. Falling again back to third. Impressive run there by LaJoy as he was on the outside and maintained that position. Here we see a challenge to the inside. Williams, who had that great starting position, goes wheel to wheel with Chuck Hosfeld. They nearly made contact. Hosfeld in the two, Williams in the 50 car. Hosfeld a seven-time winner in the NASCAR Wheel and Modified Tour. He's only run a couple of events this season, and right behind them is your points leader. 79 of McKennedy, the red and white machine to the inside of Rookie of the Year, Austin Beers in the 64. Wheel to wheel battle right there. McKennedy with that six point advantage coming in. McKennedy in the 79 car has one win this season. And that was enough to keep him atop the points chase with such consistency all season long in that 79 machine. And another championship contender right behind him. The 51 of Justin Bonsignor. Bonsignor coming into this event third in the title fight. He is 11 points behind as the green flag wave to start this event. And he is the leading winner on the tour this season. Four victories for Justin in the 51 machine. And as we're talking about championship contenders, Ron Silk, who's racing ahead of these drivers, winless to this point in 2022, but still a candidate to take home the title. Action settles down a little bit single file now. Again, it's Hirschman out in front and LaJoy pulling away from all others. So we're going to watch these championship contenders back toward the middle of the pack. Eighth position is where McKennedy runs right now in the 79 machine as we work lap 22. He is in the eighth spot and just up in front of him. That is Williams in the 50. Williams very close to the outside retaining wall there as McKennedy tries to find an inside line. Back up front now, we see Hirschman there, that brief shot of the leaders as they have pulled away from third position, blew it, and now side-by-side -side action. McKennedy pries open the inside lane and takes the seventh position away from Williams. Now also moving up to eighth, the 2022 Rookie of the Year in car 64. That is Beers moving to the inside of Williams, and just behind that battle is the 51 of Justin Bonsignor. Back to single file now. Again, this is a 200 lap race and we are just about to begin working lap 25 as the leaders will make their way to the start finish line. And we've got our eyes on Williams in the 50 and the 51 of Bonsignor. Bonsignor, as you can see on the speedway, two positions behind points leader McKennedy and he has 11 points to make up as the green flag waves. The driver of car 51, Bonsignor, now tightens that machine down to the inside, trying to make a move on Williams. Williams falling back just a little bit and goes up one lane, clears the way for Bonsignor. Williams, remember, started this race in third position in that car number 50, and he's now back to 10th in the ninth spot. It's the 51 of championship contender Bonsignor. And we see Beers just in front of Bonsignor. The blue number three machine creeping into the picture now. That is Ryan Priest, the former tour champion, who is once again steering the bowler racing entry number three. The tour champion in 2013, Priest in that blue, very, very historic modified team there. That team has been in existence since the 1950s and has had drivers like Bug Stevens and Tony Hirschman behind the wheel. Virginia's Satch Worley spent some time driving that machine and we're here at his home track. Priest in that number three car. He's made only four starts this season as he's been competing in other NASCAR divisions for the past several seasons. Working lap 29 of 200. Bonsignor in that 51 car leading this pack that includes Priest. And now we see up front, lap traffic may become a factor as the leaders are still bumper to bumper, and they are a half straightaway ahead of Blewett in third position. Going a lap down the 0-1 of Melissa Fivefield, the most popular driver on the tour, about four years running. And now closing in quickly on the 26th of Gary McDonald, and that might be exactly what LaJoy needed. They're about to go three wide. 
lap car to the inside. Corey LaJoy, the challenger, in the middle and takes the lead from Matt Hirschman, who was in the outside lane moving around that lap car. Hirschman, the opening round winner in 2022 in car number 60, finds himself now in second position. Now they move around the number 97 of Doza to put him a lap down and caution once again on the speedway. A three car incident in turn four. We see the 17 machine of Bobby Labonte, one of the drivers involved there. We see the 55 car of Jeremy Gerster involved. Labonte with some front end damage, able to pull away from the scene of that incident. The former NASCAR Cup Series champion, the Texas driver who's been racing modifieds a few times a year. And look at the shower of sparks from the 55 of Gerstner. Wow, that machine is maybe not quite as damaged as it is just dragging that rim on the pavement as he's trying to get back to his pit stall. And as this caution flag gives us an opportunity to welcome back to the booth, Dean Strom. Dean, glad you could join us here. Great job of the opening, opening ceremonies down trackside. Good to be here, good to be back in the booth. And I've been working my way back up. I've been kind of keeping tabs on what's going on, been listening to you. It's uh, it's fantastic. That move for the lead that Corey LaJoy put on, oh my. You can tell that this is the last race of the season. We are only on lap 33, and that move was probably three laps ago now. You're in the lap 30 of a 200 <laughs> lap race, and they're going three wide. That's how badly these drivers want to win at Martinsville, and that's what it means to carry the season ending victory momentum into your shop for the rest of winter and to go home with the grandfather clock. That's right, the traditional grandfather clock here at Martinsville Speedway. And boy, you know better than anybody that 75 years of racing history here at this speed plant includes a lot of fantastic modified history. Drivers like Jeff Bodine, uh, drivers like Richie Evans have all taken home clocks from this facility. Corey LaJoy looking for his very first one as he is trying to scrub some heat back into the tires, anticipating going back to green flag quickly as all three cars are removed from the scene. And when we hit the scoring line this time, by under caution will be working lap 35 of 200 Hirschman back to the second spot and Hirschman is known for being a driver who takes it easy and saves his equipment till the end so the question I have for you Dean we saw a bold move three wide it was Hirschman ironically on the outside but does this play into Hirschman's strategy to let somebody else maybe burn the tires and brakes off the car at this facility I think it does I was a little surprised by how aggressive Corey LaJoy was this early in the race. You talk about it, a 200 lap race. That's a long race here at this half mile. A half mile that is hard on the brakes, hard on equipment. They do have uh, another set of tires as we see some pit action here. Uh, Tommy Baldwin's machine, the number seven machine. Bonsignor, Justin Bonsignor uh, in the pits as well. And look at that, fuel. they're even racing each other as best <laughs> they can on the pits. These are your championship contenders. You talked about early bold moves under green, and there's some bold moves under yellow as well. Silk in the 16 car just inched out a wheel ahead of Bon Senor. And again, these are two of the drivers we're paying close attention to who can take home not only the clock from Victory Lane in Martinsville, but the Trophy Cup, the big hardware for the 2022 NASCAR Wheeland Modified Tour Championship. And as to your point about this being a long race, we saw wholesale pit stops very early in this event 10 12 cars came down pit lane including these two championship contenders so how many pit stops do you anticipate during a race of this length here at Martinsville well I think it's going to depend on how many cautions we have this is the second caution and we're already seeing some guys my guess is if you come down this early on lap 35 second caution it's because you wanted to make some adjustments of some sort and there we see McKennedy the points leader in car number 79 he came in with that slim points lead. He stayed out. He did not make a pit stop as the 22 of Kyle Bonsignor just in front of him. And for those uh, for those who are confusing the Bonsignors, let's get that straight because we're going to be talking an awful lot about Justin, who's in championship contention. Well, right here in front of McKennedy's number 79 machine, we see the 22 car, Kyle Bonsignor, who at the moment is much, much closer to the front of this field than his cousin. That's right. They are cousins. They are not brothers. And they're relatively the same age just a few months apart cousins and not brothers and we see Kyle taking his position here alongside the seven uh, blew it and those cousins uh, 
really have set the modified world on fire. Both have been winners on the tour, of course, but Kyle has since moved to Illinois and makes a long commute back to the eastern United States for all of these events. And now we see this double file restart. Kurt, oh, hey, whoa, you got to pick that up there. Let's uh, let's get the gasoline off the pit lane here. Great job by the officials to keep everybody safe there as somebody took the gas can with them. But here on lap 37, Dean, we get ready to go back to green flag racing. It's Corey LaJoy in the 53, maintaining his lead over Matt Hirschman, your fastest qualifier in the 60. And is Hirschman going to be able to get down to the bottom? He will. He'll clear the third place runner and get down to the bottom lane. I suspect Hirschman's going to ride here for a little bit. I would suspect the same, and those two drivers were way out ahead of the rest of the field. There we see Max McLaughlin in the 77. He is right behind that number 50 car of Ronnie Williams, who had the outstanding qualifying run. And then we see the 20 of Eddie McCarthy. He was another driver that surprised people in qualifying. Williams and McCarthy both starting very close to the front. Maybe a best day ever on the modified tour for both of those drivers this evening. McLaughlin in the 77, he drives dirt track modifieds, he drives indoor midgets, he drives ARCA series, he drives everything with wheels on it, both dirt and asphalt. He's made a handful of starts here in 2022 in that number 77 machine. This being his third start of the season and his father, Magic Shoes, Mike McLaughlin, a many time winner on this tour as the 77 now takes a peek to the inside of Williams, young Max McLaughlin in the 77 and Williams in the 50, who was your third fastest qualifier on the day. It is McLaughlin who gains the position. That's her battle for fourth right there. So now we've got McLaughlin and Williams still hanging out in the top five. But boy, up front, LaJoy has really pulled away. So we'll watch this mid-pack battle right here. A couple of drivers who made some pit stops. We see the 7NY. Of course, that is the New Jersey driver for this event. That is Jimmy Blue at the veteran making his way to the inside of Dave Sapienza. Talk about veterans. Sapienza has been a staple on this tour for a long time in that 36 car. He surrenders a spot to Blue it, and here comes your points leader. Now McKennedy in the 79, your points leader has Ron Silk right behind him. Silk in the 16 car right behind McKennedy. That's how they stand in the points chase coming into this event as well. They are eighth and ninth in the running here on lap 44, eighth and ninth. And here we see the 07 of Emerling. Emerling had a very disappointing qualifying run after he was fastest in practice in that 07 machine. And Zapienza in the 36, Mike, is kind of hung up on the outside. Now as Chuck Hosfield in that white number two is going to sneak to the inside. They are not giving, they are not giving Zapienza any opportunity here once you get him up on the outside. Zapienza had a terrific qualifying run, but as you mentioned, pinned to the outside here. He's got Hosfeld along. Priest in the three car just took a spot away from him as well. Boy, how many times have Hosfeld and Priest battled each other for top spots in a NASCAR Tour modified race? Hosfeld has retired a couple of times. He's obviously failing at that because he's back out on the speedway doing well. He had a start at Oswego Speed his second start of the season and he was a car length from victory lane so he's able to shake the rust off anytime he jumps back into a modified now sapienza has the position back on the inside let's see if hosfeld can challenge priest priest about a half a groove higher there in turns one and two then hosfeld priest is another one in that three machine boy oh boy will you talk about a hard charger he got up one lane there and surrendered that spot to the two of Hosfeld and another championship contender creeping into the picture there, pulling up to the there's, rear bumper. There's problems with the three car. You see how much higher he's running and he lost that spot to Hosfeld, but either he got something on oh, the tires Oh, we've got a caution there. on the speedway. A two car incident in turn one and it's Bobby Labonte once again. That 17 machine pulling away from the scene there. Labonte had some damage early on and there you see LaJoy who was able to get on the brakes before he reached that incident as there were two cars stopped briefly in turns one and two they have both pulled away now and coming to the tail of the field we see the 17 of Labonte who had that nose damage from the earlier event sorry that was the 39 of two yellow cars out there and I've got them confused the 39 yellow was the car in turn number one that's Ryan Newman the former Daytona 500 winner in car 39 and Dean you and I talked earlier Newman has an unbelievable winning percentage 
in the NASCAR Wheel and Modified Tour. Only oh. runs a couple times a year. A few times a year, and he seems to win at least 50% or more of his races. And we see there the 55 car of Gerster right with him. That may have been the other car that was stopped there in turns one and two. Both Newman and Labonte driving half yellow and half black race car. So I called the wrong number there at first from high atop the Martinsville Speedway here. But Newman, who was got a popular roar from the crowd during driver introductions, now having a problem as a many time winner on the tour. Checking back in on Justin Bonsignor, we saw him at the most recent caution come down pit lane. He has worked his way back up into 15th position, but uh, Justin Bonsignor and the number 51 machine, one of our four championship contenders. Uh, you talked about it earlier, Mike. This isn't a playoff type scenario. This happened organically. Four drivers have an opportunity to leave Martinsville Speedway with a championship, and there is Bonsignor in the number 51 machine. And the best news for Bonsignor, we are only on lap 50 of the Virginia is for Racing Lovers 200, so 150 more laps for him to advance. Now Kyle Bonsignor, his cousin heading down pit lane, not as many cars on this caution, but there we see Beers, the rookie of the year in the 64 car making a stop. There we see the 34 of J.B. Fortin. He's had a great season winning an unsanctioned modified competition as well as running several of the races on this tour. He is 10th in the point standings coming into this event. There's Bobby Labonte in that also yellow number 17. He's got damage from the first caution flag incident. And when I, I started to talk about it, uh, they have four tires full set of tires in the pit area. So these are the four Hoosiers that they qualified on. They're gonna start the race on them. After that, they do have four, a complete set in the pit area. But as you've talked about, Mike, they have to make it last for 200 laps. <laughs> and, and two of the drivers best at that, and you've mentioned it already, Ryan Priest and second place driver, Matt Hirschman are experts at saving their equipment. Now we saw the number three car drifting up high and I wanted to talk about that for a minute because good eye catching that, that was how he lost the position and then the very next lap, the same thing. Is that a tire saving situation for Priest to not pinch it down to that bottom curb when we're only on lap number 50? We'll see, but I agree with you. Either the handling wasn't quite right or there was a major mechanical problem with that machine. He might've got up out of the groove a little bit, picked something up on the tires. You know, these are 15 inch wide tires. They're just like sponges. <laughs> as soon as you get out of the groove a little bit, you're gonna pick up, you could possibly pick up some debris, but there is Ryan Priest. You have to think that there wasn't a mechanical issue. If there was, he would have come down pit lane on this caution. I agree, and if it's just a handling problem, he's a driver that knows how to manage that because he's run 500 lap races in the Cup Series. He's run 300 lap races in the Xfinity Series. He knows how to handle a car that's going to change drastically in a long event like this. And we were talking about Sapienza earlier. He just made a pit stop as well, so we saw that car maybe was not to his liking, but as we see Priest in that Bowler Racing number three car, one of the most historic teams in NASCAR racing lore, that team has been around since the 1950s. And when I talked earlier today to Ryan, I said, you're a guy that's famous for working on your own equipment. When you drive for this team that's been in existence twice as long as you've been alive, what's your role? Are you bringing the wrenches? He said, it's truly a team effort. It's his shocks, it's his front suspension, and then the rest of the team does their thing as they have for some 60 years or more with that number three team. So Priest and the Bowler Racing entry, a marriage that began many, many years ago. And Priest, I saw him in a super late model last December, Pensacola Speedway, Five Flag, or Five Flag Speedway, I should say, in Pensacola, Florida, for the Snowball Derby. You talk about a guy working on his own car. He was in the tire shed. I saw him in the tire shed, going through tires, uh, had had the air pressure gauge, had the tape measure, and a, and a piece of cold pizza. So, I mean, <laughs> he was getting after it. Uh, he had a great run there at the Snowball Derby, and it just, you totally have to have all the respect in the world for a guy like that that just is not afraid to jump in with both hands, both feet, and get stuff done in their race car. And, and does it at every level, including the Xfinity Series and more. So uh, again, no stranger to this machine, as, as the Bowler Racing Team has hosted drivers like uh, Bug Stevens going way, way back, and, and even uh, Matt Hirschman's father, Tony Hirschman, who was a championship winning driver with this Bowler team. One of their claims to fame is hand painted. That number three, that blue stripe, that is still painted by brush, just like the old days, where some of the sponsor decals are now the vinyl graphics, but that team holds to tradition very well so no surprise that a driver who also is a traditional type driver like Priest makes a good fit with them so in 2022 only four starts coming into this event for Priest on the tour as he's been busy with other NASCAR endeavors but uh, he was the champion of the tour back in 2013 
And last season, he was a three-time winner on the tour in only occasional starts. He had sort of the Ryan Newman-type schedule last year and still picked up multiple wins on the tour. We're going to go with a red flag condition here at Watkins or at uh, Martinsville Speedway, I should say. You saw that uh, the safety truck was going down the front straightaway, laying the speedy dry down. So obviously some fluid on the track, and it extended all the way down the front straightaway and into turn number one. So that is the reason for the red flag. We are 54 laps in. And not just a great idea for safety of both the track crew and the competitors, but great for the fans as well that we're going to have more green flag it's action and laps. we're not clicking those yep. races, those laps off under caution. So that's outstanding. So uh, as we take a look at the, at the leaderboard presently, we've got Corey LaJoy in the 53 car who made that bold three wide move with race leader Matt Hirschman in a lapped car. Hirschman holds on to the second spot. Third, how about that 77 car, Max McLaughlin, one of the most versatile drivers in America. He's in a podium position right now. Then Ronnie Williams in fourth had that great qualifying run. Ronnie Williams is going to turn a lot of heads after this event. Even, even a top 10 finish here at Martinsville among a 35 car field of this quality is going to be something that people are talking about for a long time for Williams if he can stay that close to the front. And the same for fifth place running Ed McCarthy. He's shocked a lot of people in qualifying, hanging on to a top five position here as we're frozen on lap 54. Jimmy blew it back up to the sixth position. We saw him make a pit stop early on that first caution. Then championship contenders John McKennedy riding seventh in the 79 car, Ron Silk riding eighth in the 16 car seventh and eighth are two of your championship contenders in fact they are one and two in that same order in the title fight patrick emmerling in the ninth position in the 07 the former rookie of the year and good to see him cracking the top 10 because you and i were both shocked that the driver who is always fast at these events and set fastest time in practice had a kind of disastrous qualifying run in that 07 car it was really kind of it was surprising because uh, emmerling had been working his way up the speed charts. We had an hour-long practice session, had been working his way up the speed charts. So to see him qualify that poorly, it was really a surprise. Indeed. So as we continue with the field rundown here, Ryan Priest, as we mentioned in the 11th position, Bon Senor, as we've been talking about in the 12th spot, Doug Kobe holding down 13th position right now. He made a pit stop as well in car number 10. He is the six time champion and driving his own number 10 entry here this weekend as he has spent some time and gotten a couple of victories driving the seven NY for Tommy Baldwin racing this season. So hopping back and forth between a couple of teams and even a great run in the SRX series Series and those unique championship cars that kind of remind you of the old IROC series. Kobe's been successful on that tour as well. 14th spot right now, it's the 44 of Bobby Santos III. Santos, a former champion of the modified tour back in 2010, another one of those versatile drivers. He wins in sprint cars. He wins in super modifieds. He wins in anything on asphalt. He spent some time in the NASCAR Xfinity Series as well. In that 44 machine, he is seeking his first win of this season. Last season, he made three starts on the Modified Tour, and this season, his fourth start, just a couple of weeks ago, he was celebrating in victory lane after winning a winged 410 sprint car event in Pennsylvania. So again, one of those versatile drivers, just like Max McLaughlin, who we talked about a little bit earlier. I know you've seen Santos compete in several different forms of competition. I saw Santos out at Phoenix International Raceway, and he just for you, uh, he, he put a hurting on him. He really <laughs> did put a hurting on him. A silver crown race. And uh, it was really fun to watch. He's got USAC championships. I'm glad you mentioned Silver Crown because uh, just like Ryan Newman, who's in this race, just like Tony Stewart and so many other drivers, he is a champion. In fact, a multi-series champion in the United States Auto Club non-wing sprints, midgets, and Silver Crown cars. So that paved his career path to the NASCAR ranks. And he's uh, rolling out now as we see lap 54. We're going to bring the cars back to a caution flag pace with the oil dry spread throughout the speedway. And I thought it was just the front straightaway going down into turn one. No, it went all the way around this the half mile track. Exactly. As there we see the safety truck on the back straightaway as well. And of course, you can't be too careful. The last thing a driver needs at these speeds is to lose traction even for a split second. So all the time that's needed is very well served in this case. In qualifying, speaking of speeds, we were over 100 miles per hour for an average around this track. So, yes, to your point, Mike, 
middle of the front straightaway, middle of the back straightaway, going down into the corners. We're well over 100 miles an hour. And one of those drivers that is typically very, very fast, Patrick Emerling in the 07 car. Uh, he started this event uh, in the 18th position, which was, as we mentioned, a little bit surprising. And now some looks under that car to see if maybe there's some fluid coming from that machine. Emerling, who's uh, a very, very aggressive driver and usually qualifies pretty well. Again, we were stunned after he was the fastest car in practice that he was only 18th quick in qualifying and definitely something more to that than a routine tire change as he immediately came down pit lane once the caution flag was displayed. So, oh, and they, now they're going to, looks like maybe a carburetor adjustment or something more significant. Uh, Emerling, who's uh, a former rookie of the year in the NASCAR Wheel and Modified Tour, is going under the hood. That's never a good sign. It was. 2013 that he earned the Rookie of the Year title and three times a winner last season on the tour. Yeah, you have to take the air cleaner off to get the hood off on this machine. And uh, when, the, when, when more than one crew member has a roll of shop towels in their hands. <laughs> uh, Not a good sign. Yeah. Not a good sign at all. Now, of course, as the laps uh, are going to be counted now, lap 56, not good news for Emerling. And again, he was uh, he was back in the field at the start, maybe saw a little bit of life from him here early on, but a break that uh, is tough to say the least. Uh, Jan Leedy, the long time and many time winning NASCAR wheel and modified tour driver, serving as the crew chief and sort of a mentor to Emerling for several years now. Leedy, who drove the famous number 25 car to numerous victories all over the Eastern United States has played a very active role in this team for a good four or five years or more. Well, that right there is a clue. Let's follow that trail. That is some outstanding camera work right there. And that is, that's what you call video journalism <laughs> right there, as now we know the story. Thanks, guys, for that outstanding shot to the 07 of Emerling. And, uh, boy, it, is, is that oil? Is that grease? I mean, the amount of oil dry and the number of times that the sweeper has been around there, I'm wondering if it's maybe something even stickier than oil. If that's, uh, if now, of course, they are working toward the front of the car, so we're going to assume that that's oil, but I know some grease that's been, yeah, there you go, there you go. If it's grease, it tends to be even worse. So the good news is within a couple of laps, knowing now that it's oil, we should have everything safe enough to resume green flag racing as the field is now on lap 57 as leader Corey LaJoy in second place, Matt Hirschman follow the pace car around the speedway. Lap 57 being scored of 200, but we've got oil dry, we've got brooms, we've got sweepers, we've got everything out on the surface of the Martinsville Speedway to get us back to safe green flag racing as we have now found the culprit, it's Emerling. And you know, I, you know, with the, the incident that brought out the caution, I thought perhaps maybe one of the cars involved in the incident would have gotten a punctured radiator for some water on the racetrack, or maybe a punctured, ruptured oil line from one of the cars in the incident. But it turns out it's Emerling who had no physical damage to the car whatsoever, just experiencing this mechanical problem that now holds us up for track cleanup here at Martinsville Speedway. 57 laps complete, and again, laps under caution flag do count the red flag laps obviously saved us a bunch of laps here and let the safety crew go to work cleaning up that fluid that was on the race surface but caution flag laps do count so we have 50 lap 57 complete working lap 58 and of course they've got to hit the pit lane as well as we saw that trail of oil leading to the emerling pit stall so we're going to make sure that pit lane is also safe and since we're talking about the pits let's go back to the point you made about the tires there's got to be a complicated tire strategy discussed with each team because they only have that set of four behind the walls you mentioned now with with these caution laps making it less than 200 under green you've got to wonder if some of those teams are going to think differently about that strategy now it's a complicated thing with tires and martinsville speedway is hard on tires you mentioned those high speeds averaging over a hundred miles per hour and with those concrete turns it's great grip and great traction for the drivers and it really really punishes those hoosier racing slicks they're going to lay rubber down we can see it laid down already from this afternoon's practice session, an hour long practice session, uh, plus now the opening laps of this race. So they're going to lay down rubber in the corners. That's gonna change things. That's gonna change the handling characteristics. That's gonna just play into the whole strategy of when these teams will pit. Generally speaking, you want to hold off as long as you can to put on those fresh Hoosier tires. 
and, and make a charge towards the front. That being said, if you're having a handling, pro handling problem and you need to come in, well, you have to come in because you can't afford to go a lap down. Exactly. Track position would be critical in that case of going a lap down. And it, 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 these teams, it, we talked about the strategy and the importance of these tires. Now these teams have to look into a crystal ball and say, when will the last caution of this event occur? Will I have 40 laps to put those new sneakers on and come back up through the field? If you wait till 15 laps to go, is that enough time when you make a pit stop and maybe the other drivers don't? The strategy game here at Martinsville for a 200 lap race is absolutely fascinating. And these laps under caution could be changing that for some of the teams because this is also going to change the fuel use. Now, most of the teams are gonna need the tires before they need the fuel, but your fuel use is changing right now and that wear on the tires even the rubber that you mentioned we're starting to see laid down we've got about 12 or 14 laps now of not putting that rubber on top of the concrete because at the caution flag speed they don't lose that layer of rubber so everything is changing from the driver's standpoint as they will see less and less of that black rubber through the concrete turns and the strategy for the guys in the pits boy I would not want to be a crew chief and try to figure out in this event now how to use those tires it's interesting to know that in some series they do what's called a controlled pit stop stop or a halfway break here in the nascar wheel and modified tour it's live pit stops now the only thing they can't do is they can't put fuel in the car and change tires in the same stop other than that it's live pit stops and the fans love it i mean this that can shake up the order that you know if you've got one car that's dominating a race those pit stops help to keep the field uh, bunched up together it makes a guy work for it in certain ways and if you're one of the four championship contenders that's got to play into your mind as well because the championship and not just the race and grandfather clock that championship could be lost on pit road in an event like this where only 13 points separate the top four drivers and that is just crazy <laughs> let that sink in for just a second 13 points separate the top four, four drivers i mean how many times does the season come to an end and a driver has a 30 or 40 point lead right and the driver introduction ceremony takes place and we say well by starting his engine he has clinched the championship in this event it's not the case at all as we see your points leader john mckennedy there another versatile driver he wins in super modified racing as well from time to time the uh, winged northeast beast but here this season making his second full-time run at every event on the NASCAR Wheel and Modified Tour. Second time in his career, he's followed the tour loyally, and he's in position on the strength of one victory in 2022. Consistency. Some consistency has been the name of the game, especially not only for McKennedy with one win, but his nearest challenger, six point back, Ron Silk, former champion is Silk, but not a winner in 2022. And there's Silk's silver number 16 machine as these two drivers right with each other. And earlier today, by the way, these guys were all hanging out together. All four of them are pitted right together. These guys spent a lot of time with each other this afternoon, so it's uh, it's it's not a bitter rivalry, at least in personnel. Earlier today, you said you had a chance to talk to these drivers, and how do you prepare the cars for this event, for a run for the championship? They said, or you said, uh, well, if they were telling the truth. Right, that's, that's exactly right. If they were telling the truth. And one other factor is we're talking about a cool night here at Martinsville. Everybody in the pre-race pit area was talking about brakes, which are always a factor in every form of racing here at Martinsville. This could have helped somebody having a brake problem to get them nice and cooled down as well. So as the pace car lights are extinguished, we are getting set to go back to green flag racing here on lap 62 with the 53 of Corey LaJoy visiting the Modified Series from his NASCAR Cup Series ride with Matt Hirschman in second, Max McLaughlin in third. And on lap number 63, the green flag is out, up to full speed in the Virginia is for Race Lovers 200 here at Martinsville. Hirschman's gonna get a great jump on the outside. Up the back straightaway. Can Hirschman clear him? As oh, we caution go again as we have a caution. giant collection of cars stopped in turns one and two. I'm not even going to begin to start calling out numbers until some of them are pulled away from the scene. There we see Tyler Ripkema, J.B. Fortin, 
Uh, there's Ryan Newman in his second incident. Bobby Labonte was a part of that incident Ryan as well. Ryan Doza in the 97. There's Doza stopped again, and boy, that was a, that was an awful lot of modifieds, but minimal damage as they've all pulled away. There we see Fortin with a flat tire. JB is going to be headed pit side immediately, but that was a lot of stopped race cars. I didn't see the incident happen. There's Ryan Newman. Now he's got similar damage to the nose of Bobby Labonte's car as both of them have a crunched in front bumper and air intake there. Some of that air will scoop up from that bottom uh, splitter, if you will. That's probably not what it's called on a modified, <laughs> but hey, we're at a NASCAR track, right? Uh, that front air dam is certainly crunched up to the front bumper on Newman's machine. and. Boy, that was a lot of stopped cars, and fortunately, no one is so severely damaged that they've come to a halt. Every machine is under its own power moving once again. So A, that indicates this will be a pretty brief caution, and B, that means that nobody is severely damaged, and we may still have 34 machines in green flag competition when we go back to racing once again. You talked about that. Third, we started with 35 cars. We lost Patrick Emmerling, but to have 34 cars still running on this track on a restart, it's going to become close quarters. And, and I think that many cars contributed to what we just saw there in turns one and two. Ryan Newman, a many time winner on this tour and racing the number 39. We talked about USAC just a little while ago. The open wheeled ranks that uh, uh, the driver of car number 44, Bobby Santos the third, used to catapult his career to other levels. Well, Ryan Newman the same. Ryan Newman's been a champion in the USAC ranks, racing wingless midgets, sprints, and silver crown cars. And I bring that up now because his number was number 39 back in the day. Most of his open wheel rides were number 39. So when he retired from the Cup Series and wants to do more short track racing, that's why he went back to the number 39 because his midget sprints and silver crown tail tanks carried those same digits for many, many years earlier in his career. Had the number 39 on the side of his car for a few years when he was in the Cup Series. That's correct, that's correct. The Army machine, I believe. And now the number 20 machine headed down pit lane got a quick stop there for McCarthy who uh, McCarthy is another one of those drivers who qualified much better than expected uh, just fuel just fuel for McCarthy that's a, that's an interesting strategy now as uh, and now other drivers coming down pit lane JB Fortin we know why he's pitting in the 34 because of that flat tire we know that Newman got some damage uh, so the drivers on pit lane now primarily from that incident McCarthy um, was inside the top 10 he was running seven so he gave up some great track position to come down and get fuel. And as you mentioned, without those tires, he's not going to be that much faster from the drivers that he's pulling up with at the back of the field. So he faces a challenge. And boy, what a great qualifying run. He was very impressive to me, uh, just like Williams was with that top 10 qualifying run and maintaining a top 10 position. Uh, again, maybe a career night for him here at Martinsville in the series finale for 2022. Just to look at that car on pit lane. You talked about it earlier. These cars look fast standing still, don't they? They are the most beautiful machines to me in any form of racing and accentuated here by the chrome rims and the chrome nerf bars. And the, the lights. Oh, the yeah. lights. <laughs> under the lights. I think race cars look faster under the lights. I think they look cooler. I think they look brighter. I'm I agree 100%. Absolutely agree with you. And, you know, these machines, let's say you bring somebody that's never been to a race before. You say, hey, let's go catch the NASCAR Wheel and Modified Tour. Here's a car where the front wheels stand taller than the hood. How cool is that to somebody? <laughs> if you show these machines to a non-race fan, it would win anybody over in a heartbeat. So uh, these machines have been close to my heart for a very long time as I live in the Northeast. And there we see Catalano in the 54 car. Uh, he's another driver who was a rookie of the year in the NASCAR Wheel and Modified Tour back in 2018. And in certain races, it's no surprise to see three Catalanos all racing together. Uh, Timmy, his uh, brother, is not in this event, but uh, Tommy comes into this event in that 54 car, seventh in the championship points chase. So if he makes a pit stop at this point, and as he has, he's uh, back there with Bon Senor, another one of the drivers who he might not be in contention for the championship. But let's face it, if you can tell your sponsors and your fans that you finished top 10, for the entire season in the NASCAR Wheel and Modified Tour, you've made an accomplishment. And here's Catalano in seventh coming into this event. Uh, not sure if he can gain any ground on sixth, but certainly points are important to him as well. Looks like at the start finish line, the field is going to get the one to go signal. Going to be going back to green next time by when we take the green flag. We'll have 69 laps complete of this 200 lapper. The Virginia is for Racing Lovers 200. 
And boy, let's hope we get a cleaner turn one than that last melee that was as many cars as I've ever seen stopped under a caution flag incident. Fortunately, all cars pulled away. So uh, once again, we are without Patrick Emmerling from that oil leak problem. And we are without Walter Sutton, who dropped out very early in this event. So row number one for this restart, we see on the inside, it's LaJoy. On the outside, it's Hirschman. Hirschman got a great restart last time. I think if that lap had counted, we would have a new leader. But as such, LaJoy still scored number one. And boy, does he leap out in front by two car lengths over Hirschman. Hirschman now wheel to wheel with young Max McLaughlin in the 77. McLaughlin on the inside, the preferred inside lane here at Martinsville Speedway. He's going to hold the position. Hirschman can't get down to the bottom. Hirschman, your pole starter. McLaughlin started 20th in this event. So if he takes over the second position, he has passed perhaps more cars than anybody else in this field. Young McLaughlin, the second generation driver in car 77. And right behind him, we see a battle with Williams on the outside and Jimmy Blewett in the 7NY taking that spot away. Top five again for Blewett after the early race pit stop. There's Catalano, we were talking about him, seventh in the points chase coming into this. And right beneath him, that is the Joey Coulter machine as Catalano holds off Coulter and now begins to challenge Santos on the outside. But here we see Williams and McKennedy. A brief look at your championship points leader. Now back to this mid-pack action where the black 44 car of Santos the third, the former champion. And now we see McKennedy once again. McKennedy trying to gain another position with Hosfeld right behind him. Williams in the 50 on the outside. And here comes your points leader. Move McKennedy up into the seventh position. Hosfeld's going to follow behind in the opening that was made by McKennedy. Hosfeld started eighth. He's currently back up to eighth and now take, taking a peek to the inside of McKennedy. There's Silk, another championship contender in the silver number 16 car. He will be next to do battle with Williams. Nipping at his heels is Doug Kobe, the six-time champion in car number 10. Have you noticed, Mike, everybody's being very polite. We're in the first half of this race. We talked about it being a 200 lapper. Somebody gets hung out on the outside. They've been very polite. Okay, come on back in. Not gonna press the issue. Look for that to change in the second 100. I agree completely. And these guys race together all season long. They know who is running for the championship. The driver that might be 14th, 16th in points, he's going to be polite all night long to the four championship contenders because these guys are, in fact, friends who travel the nation together every weekend. And I think everybody's going to somewhat walk on eggshells, even in that aggressive part of the race that you talked about later on, when they're around drivers like McKennedy in the 79 and Bonsignor in the 51 and Silk in the 16, who's creeping into the picture here behind Hosfeld's white number two car. Kennedy runs, as we said, in the seventh. Check that the eighth position. That's the 79 machine, red roof, black sides, the championship point leader. And just in front of him, Blewett, the New Jersey veteran in the seven and wide. Blewett has a win this season. It's come aboard that Tommy Baldwin racing number seven. And we mentioned Kobe, who was in the picture just a moment ago. He's been to victory lane in that seven and wide machine this season as well. Tommy Baldwin Racing has secured and locked up the Owner's Points Championship. That one not nearly as close. The Tommy Baldwin's 7NY car was a runaway in the Owner's Points. But we're talking about the exciting championship fight among four drivers for the Championship Drivers' Cup, the 2022 NASCAR Wheel and Modified Series title. And McKennedy there in the shot, your points leader. Again, it was a six-point margin that he had coming into this event over Silk. McKennedy with one win. Silk still seeking his first win. It'll be the first time in the modern era of NASCAR Modified Tour Racing if Silk in the 16 car could somehow surpass McKennedy with those six points and become a champion without a win. Last year, Silk had victories, and he's a former champion as well, but this season it's been all about, as you said earlier, the big C word, consistency, has put two of these drivers in the right spot tonight. So much on the line here. We talked about the grandfather clock. But to be able to spend the rest of your racing career and the rest of your days and always be called a nasty car champion.
There is the difference between first and second. Corey LaJoy and the number 53 machine, that all black, beautiful machine down in corner number one. That's the gap between him and Matt Hirschman. Hirschman goes from the second spot. LaJoy took the lead on an aggressive move around a lap car. And uh, since then, you can really, you get the sense that Hirschman is just taking it easy. He's not only very good at that, but to your previous point about everybody being polite, remember LaJoy's not a regular in this series, has no points, so the one guy that you would expect to make an aggressive move <laughs> is the one out in front. There we see Hirschman, the Pennsylvania driver with so many wins this season, one in the NASCAR Tour, that was the opening round, and he is indeed a master of maintaining that equipment. His father, a many-time champion of this series as well, and uh, Matt has won all over the eastern United States this season, and in a 200-lap race, you've got to think that that suits his driving style very much. They don't call him Big Money Matt for nothing. Exactly. Right? He chases, he doesn't chase points, he chases big checks, checkered flags, big trophies. If it's a $10,000 or more race to win, you can expect to see Matt Hirschman there, and you can expect to see him run up front. He is the dominant winner in the Race of Champions series, and he is holding down second spot, and all by himself, really, as we see there the distance between himself and the 77 of Max McLaughlin. The blue machine there is about to put the 26 car a lap down as McDonald goes another lap down. Max McLaughlin, whose father, Mike Magic Shoes McLaughlin, was an ace in not only the NASCAR uh, Xfinity Series, but in the old Bush North Series, as well as the NASCAR Wheeler Modified Tour. And Max, as we mentioned, racing dirt track modifieds much more frequently than he races the asphalt modified, but he's been in virtually every type of race car this season. He kicked off the season racing in the k &N Series. Uh, he's run the Arca Series. He's run the Truck Series. A very, very versatile driver who even wins indoor midget races during the offseason. I saw him win a road course race at Watkins Glen. There you go. Very versatile indeed. As the curb racing entry holding down third for Max McLaughlin, and he as well all by himself on the speedway as we approach lap number 90. And moving back now to the fourth position, we see there's the 77 of McLaughlin in third. We'll give you an idea of the space. There we see Jimmy Blewett. Jimmy Blewett from a racing family in New Jersey. He is steering the 7NY of Tommy Baldwin Racing again back team is the owner's point champion for the NASCAR Wheel and Modified Tour in 2022 and blew it with one victory on the season, holding down that fourth spot. And McKennedy now, see, McKennedy has now worked his way up in the fifth. McKennedy in fifth, you are correct, our points leader and boy, he is the leading championship contender. He's got that narrow six point margin, but here we see two of the contenders. There we see the 16 of Silk and the 51 of Bon Senor. They are right behind Doug Kobe's number 10 machine. But McKennedy in that 79 car, as long as he can stay out in front of these two drivers, he doesn't have to do any math in his head. He's the champ as long as he keeps these two guys and Eric Goodale behind him. And so far, he's done that virtually all race long as we worked lap 92. He had a great qualifying effort, did McKennedy, the best of the four championship contenders. So he got a chance to start up in front of his rivals. That helps. And again, you talked about being polite. You've got to wonder here if the 51 of Monsignor can get up to the 16. They are in this order in the points with Silk in the 16 car second to McKennedy, Monsignor third, and there you see that politeness. The faster car at that moment was Monsignor, and Silk said, hey, I've got to finish this race to win the championship. I'll let you go ahead right now. So move Justin Monsignor up one position. Move him up into the eighth spot. Then we see Silk right behind. They're in the top 10, but they need to gain some ground. You know they probably keep checking with their, with their spotter. They've got to be wondering, if not glancing occasionally at the scoreboard to see where the 79 car of McKennedy is, because right now he's a good four or five spots ahead of these drivers, and they know that he's got to be four or five spots behind them for them to have any chance at that championship trophy. Saw Justin Bonsignor win a big race on NASCAR weekend at Richmond Raceway earlier in the year. He has had an up and down season. Well, to say the least, I mean, he comes in here with four victories on the tour. 
And we talked about the consistency here with McKennedy in the 79, only one win. You would think four victories in a 16 race season would have you miles ahead in the championship points chase. And to your point, that roller coaster season, they've had DNFs, they've had problems. At the last race, he was back in 14th position, knowing that there were only two more opportunities to earn points. So it has indeed been a roller coaster for the 51 team this season. Quite the opposite for Silk, who is without a win, put himself in six points within the championship coming into this race tonight. So sort of opposite seasons there as Silk has been the steady, although not winning, consistent team and the opposite for Bon Senor, who's had feast and famine in the same season. Longest green flag run that we have had so far. We are approaching the halfway mark in this Virginia is for Racing Lovers 200. And the crossed flags are on the starter stand as Corey LaJoy continues to bury this field at the halfway point. The visiting driver from the NASCAR Cup Series way out in front of all challengers at this moment. But again, several pit stops and of course caution flags will change this event. There we see your leader LaJoy. He's just put Nacella a lap down. Nacella a winter, a winner on the tour this season. And not having a terrific night, he made a very, very early pit stop and now goes a lap down. But boy, LaJoy has had things all to himself since that bold three wide pass early on. Now, Corey LaJoy has had modified racing experience. He, he originally, his, his dad, of course, is from Connecticut, kind of the hotbed of, of modified racing, right? So he has experience and he has experience here at Martinsville Speedway, but he certainly is uh, less experience in these modified cars as a whole than some of his other competitors. And this would be his first win in a modified in the NASCAR wheel and modified tour. But as you said, the experience he has here in other NASCAR divisions certainly uh, is going to help him out. Curb Records, a sponsor on that machine. Of course, Curb Records was the sponsor of Richard Petty uh, for the 200th win at Daytona and has sponsored cars of all types for so many years. If, now, if I've got my data and my stats right, Corey LaJoy's dad, Randy, is Ronnie Silk's godfather. Is it godfather? I believe godfather or uncle. Yes, yeah. one of those two. Yeah, they, they are, uh, they're very close. Both families very close. And when you mention Randy LaJoy, I mean, a guy that we don't seem to talk about that much for being a two-time champion of the Xfinity Series back in the day. So, uh, yeah, LaJoy's father, uh, just like Hirschman's father, uh, with a, a decorated NASCAR resume. Couple of lap cars between the leader Exits corner, two, corner number two there. In fact, three lap cars between the leader and second running Matt Hirschman. Working lap 105 now, and LaJoy has got things comfortably in hand, still on that first set of tires. Remember, he and Hirschman have yet to pit. While many of the other drivers have come down for new tires and fuel, uh, these two drivers have stayed out on the racetrack. And of course, if your car is handling that well, why would you want to change tires at this point? His old sneakers appear to be better than some of the brand new ones on cars that are now going a lap down after pit stops. So here we see he's uh, closing in on the 29 machine driven by Spencer Davis, the Dawsonville, Georgia ace, who is another driver that competes in several different types of race cars in a typical racing season. But he is now about to go a lap down because of the torrid pace set by LaJoy in that 53 car to this point. It's going to be interesting to see after they change tires on that machine if it handles the same and he's out there all by himself it's going to be fun to watch when he makes that pit stop to see if that car is just as quick when weaving through traffic needing both lanes of the speed for a reference point spencer davis ahead of the race leader in the 24th position so and we mentioned the fact that this is the longest green flag run that they have had so far and one of the largest starting fields of the season as 35 cars took the green flag and only two cars, I believe, out at this point. So still 33 machines out there, sort of an uh, Indy 500 kind of number, if, uh, if I'm correct. And LaJoy, maybe right now LaJoy is either starting to take it easy or those tires are starting to show their wear because it took him several laps to get around Spencer Davis. And you mentioned how far back in the field Davis is running. You would expect a guy that's pulling away from second place Matt Hirschman with such ease to have been able to pass Davis a little bit quicker. So I would think on the next caution flag opportunity, we're going to see the 53 car on pit lane for those new sneakers. Now, when is that caution going to come? How is it going to come as the race leader, Randy LeJoy, uh, Corey LeJoy, <laughs> uh, in some heavy, heavy traffic? Heavy traffic, and that's something that could play into his hands for a caution as the field is strung out all around the speedway. 
faster cars looking for ways around slower cars, that tends to be what will bring out a caution flag. And I would say for he and Hirschman, it's coming to, I don't want to say dire, hey, they're still first and second, they're still way out in front of everybody else, but I bet those cars feel much, much differently here on lap 12 than they did on lap 4, 5, and 6 of this event. Corey LaJoy has led much of the distance here. There is second running Matt Hirschman in the number 60 machine. He has been the only He is other not leader. in traffic. That's true. He is. <laughs> yeah, he is able to save his tires the way he wants right now. And he was the only other leader of this event very early on. Oh, and Priest, you mentioned earlier possible problems with the bowler number three and Ryan Priest in the pits. There we see Bobby Labonte's car also in the pits. So down to uh, maybe about a 30 car field now as Labonte's team is checking out the front end damage. And, Priest uh, in that three car. I got to tell you, I expected some big things from Priest, even though his qualifying run had him starting in 16. He's a driver that knows this place so very well that with that experienced team, I expected them to contend for the win as he's not in championship contention. Tough break for Ryan Priest. And you talk about perhaps LaJoy is slowing down. The car that he just lapped, LaJoy is the black 53. The pink and white 29 he just lapped, Spencer Davis in 24th and he can't gap them. He can't put any distance between Exactly. Them. Now the JB Ford, the number 34 car, we saw that with the flat tire throwing sparks around the speedway. That car has been in an incident and maybe even mildly damaged, and LaJoy is struggling to get around. So that gap is closing between the slow cars and the fast cars, likely because of tire wear. And there's some cars in front of your race leader who are awfully loose. And you sense that Corey LaJoy is starting to lose his patience. And Matt Hirschman is catching quickly. Hirschman, there's still two lap cars in between your leaders, but that distance has ev has evaporated in a big, big way. LaJoy probably now very much hoping for a caution flag as Hirschman is, as we said, a master of saving those tires. Oh, look at that. The 29 car very much sideways. Boy, Spencer did a great job of hanging on to it after it broke a little loose there, but Fortin and Catalano, the red car on the inside there, as you mentioned, pretty much holding an even pace to your race leader. And that's what's allowing Hirschman to gain so much ground. Hirschman now just about six or seven car lengths back. Unfortunately, there are three actual cars in that car length distance. So this is great racing here on lap 119 of 200 here at Martinsville. Corey LaJoy now is going to see some clear track in front of him much to his liking, I'm sure. And Matt Hirschman is going to have to deal with that gaggle of lap cars. Hirschman didn't seem to have as much trouble dealing with them. No, Hirschman actually kind of followed, and hey, look at this, championship contenders together on the speedway again. There's the 58 of Goodale. We have talked very little about Goodale in this race. His front bumper is bent sky high, so he's made some contact with another car there. And we see the brakes heating up, the traditional Martinsville orange glow. Goodale, the 58 car, started in 15th position. He comes into tonight fourth in the points, needing 13 markers to catch points leader McKennedy and now he and Silk are going wheel to wheel championship contenders fighting for position there's the 0-2 of Joey Coulter the former NASCAR truck racer and dirt track oh. racer and there's contact look at that oh a car is now off the pace I believe that is the 90 was that the 99 machine? 92 the 92 machine the 92 everybody's back on their of way Nacella no nearly hard. brought out a caution which is just about exactly what your race leader there in the 53 LaJoy would have wanted. Do you sense that <laughs> we're in the second half of the race? We are. We have some drivers that need to come down pit lane, and they're not as patient as they were. Patience beginning to dwindle, as you predicted earlier on, Dean. Great forecasting abilities that you have for that to occur. And boy, you know, that 92 car, you've got to wonder if maybe Oh, look at this. Oh, we're not going to wonder anything. We're going to just watch as Goodale, the championship contender in fourth in the points, takes a position from Silk, who's second in the points. Coulter now separating them. And here comes Ryan Newman to the inside of the 16 of Silk. Silk has a problem. He is dropping positions quickly. Is it perhaps a tire going down? Is it a mechanical problem? As the 64 of Beers, your rookie of the year, moves underneath Silk. That is, oh, yes, yeah, Silk is slight. It might be a tire going down but Silk, who is second in the points chase, having a problem while Goodale advances. But and look who's right behind. Race leader LaJoy is catching up to Silk. And 
the championship contender has gone a lap down on lap 127. On lap 127 of 200, Ron Silk going a lap down, and that could be the championship hopes for Silk passing by right here on the speedway. Silk, the 2011 NASCAR Wheel and Modified Tour champion, is slowing dramatically. There goes Hirschman by. And now lap cars, the Sella and the lap car number 20 of McCarthy also going by. Big time problems. Oh, still slightly. And remember, he did make pit stops. So he has new tires on that machine, maybe not all four, but he does have new tires and can barely control that machine. Ron Silk spins, entering the back straight out of turn two. The caution flag that was much needed by your race leader, Corey LaJoy, comes at the expense of a championship contender. Now also spinning Ken Hagee in the 18 car. He's 16th in the championship choice. And we are going to watch pit lane now as certainly Silk, certainly your leader LaJoy will be pitting. And I expect wholesale pit stops here on lap 130. 70 laps to go, and Ron Silk, can we say now, with the other championship contenders racing so solidly inside the top 10 that Silk may now be out of contention as he's gone a lap down. Those other championship contenders, Mike, that you speak of, John McKennedy in the fourth position, Justin Bonsignor in the ninth position, and uh, Goodale in the 14th position. And here comes our replay. We're gonna cue up what happened to the 16 of Ron Silk. Here's the change for position that I think was very significant. There's a very loose handling race car, and there's Goodale in the 58, the most recent race winner, who would eventually take that spot away after that multi-car contact with Nacella. And here it comes, entering turn number two, the car got loose, and exiting turn two, it's way too much for even the skilled Ron Silk to be able to save as he spins to the entrance of the back straightaway. And Boy, his championship hunt is really taking a hit here on lap 130. As we work now, lap 131, and we get ready to watch the action on pit lane, Dean. And we could see that caution coming. You documented it, Mike. You could see for several laps that Ron Silk was off the pace. We could see it was a loose condition. We knew there was an issue, so it was just a matter of time before he was either going to have to come down pit lane or we were going to have a caution. Now, I'm, I'm expecting virtually every car on the speedway to head down pit lane because with that long green flag run, you've got to wonder if there may not be another caution flag in the last 67, 65 maybe laps of this race once we go back to green flag racing, taking a guess as to when that green will be displayed. And they're going to need fuel. The drivers exactly. that have yet to pit are going to need fuel. It's going to get very interesting as pit strategy comes into play here in the Virginia is for Race Lovers 200. Green flag indicates pit lane is open and here they come. Leaders headed down pit lane. 53 of LaJoy, 60 of Hirschman. LaJoy who has run away from this field. We can see the handling going away. We can see his lap times leveling out to the cars in 20th and 24th position. And look at how many of these NASCAR modifieds are headed to their pit stalls. It's lap 133, and the complexion of this race could change greatly right here. There's LaJoy getting the service. Rear end is up, gonna change both rear tires. Here's your points leader, McKennedy, who all race long has not threatened to take the lead by any stretch, but has maintained his distance ahead of all of his championship challengers. So he's gotta feel like it's been a good night so far. Looks like two right side tires going on as opposed to some of the teams changing the two rear. Uh, we, had the, we had the left rear as well. Left rear as well? Yep, on the 79. And first car down is Bon Senor. Third driver in the, pit st in the uh, championship standings is out first in car 51. Weighing the speed limit. And McKennedy shaking the front wheels there to get a little heat into those sneakers as he's already back out on the speedway. LaJoy still in the pits. The longest stop was for that of the leader. As he pulls out right behind Austin Beers, the 2022 Rookie of the Year on this tour. Boy, LaJoy spent a tremendous amount of time in the pits, and we know the handling was going away. I didn't see if they took a wrench to any of the, of the weight jack bolts there, but uh, certainly the longest pit stop of the of the championship contenders and leaders for Corey LaJoy. This could certainly be a game changer, this caution for LaJoy, because as you said, uh, 
uh, it was a long pit stop as Ron Silk is down off the jack and away in the number 16, Spencer Davis. We can see the stickers on those tires of the 29. He's got some new tires. Matt Hirschman got a splash of fuel. He is back underway on the 60 machine. So when we cycle through, we'll, we'll uh, see where this all sorts out. But we're going to have uh, probably about, when we go back to green, about 65 laps remaining. Looks that way, and here comes LaJoy back down pit lane because he's going to need the fuel part. Got the tires changed on the first stop, and just like Hirschman, who made the two stops, he's going to pull back in. When he rolled back out, he was 14th, and again, it's too early because the scoring has to still settle down from all these stops, but he was shown in that one caution lap as 14th on the grid. Uh, he's going to be dropping back a little bit more, but as we noticed, Hirschman was doing the same with the double pit stop as you're not allowed to take the fuel and tires in the same spot, same stop. And he is good to go. Is that car back under power? There we go. And the race long leader, LaJoy, will surrender that post for fuel and tires. And we'll get the order shaken out for you here in just a moment as we're on lap 135 of 200. McKennedy was one of the first cars back out of the championship and lead contenders, but it's probably gonna be a couple of cars in front of him. Now we're gonna have some cars take the wave around Jamie um, Tomaino, the but, Jet in car 99. But look at the, going around. if we can see the first car who's lined up behind the pace car. It is, in fact, McKennedy. Yep. So Your he is championship point leader. Unbelievable that he's maintaining that six-point lead. One of the contenders directly behind him. That'll be third place starting Bonsignor, but it's Blewett on the outside. So it's McKennedy, your race leader, after that pit stop shakeup. Points lead by six points at the start of the night, then Blewett. Just like McKennedy, one win this season. Both of the drivers restarting from row one here on lap 137 have been to victory lane this season. And Hirschman and LaJoy, the drivers who came into the pits first and second, well back in the field on this restart. We can't even see them yet. There they are from way back there. As we get set to go green on lap 137 of 200, it's McKennedy, Lewis, Bonsignor, Bonsignor, the second row made up of the Bonsignor Cousins. As we go back to full speed, and boy, McKennedy really got the jump on Blewett. Justin Bonsignor into second spot. There's Kraus in the 24. He is to the inside of Kyle Bonsignor. And Doug Kobe in the 10. We've not talked about Kobe very much. He's got himself in a position to possibly challenge for this win. Championship contender Eric Goodale the red and white 58 car. He's a part of that picture, not yet into the top five, but wow, does Kobe make a bold move to the inside of Kyle Bonsignor. Kyle Bonsignor in the 22 restarted in the second row in fourth spot, and he's lost three or four positions since the green flag wave, the most recent one to the 10 of Kobe. Kobe, no stranger to Martinsville Speedway, the six-time tour champion, maybe showing his hand now. There's Ryan Newman in the 39 car right behind championship contender Goodale. Going to be watching for Hirschman to be coming back up through the field. And we're going to be watching that 16 of, of Silk right in front of the 53 of LaJoy. Did Silk get that handling problem fixed? Silk. Oh, oh, hang contact. on. Turn three. Look out. And it looked like maybe Silk had to get a little harder on the binders. That car may still not be right. And that resulted in LaJoy stacking up right at his rear bumper. But there's Hirschman in the 60. We're still assuming that Hirschman and the 53 of, of LaJoy may be two of the fastest cars on the speedway. After that tire change, there's no way to tell, but they've now passed the 16 of LaJoy, uh, sorry, the 16 of Silk, who's still sliding, and look at that inside move. Still being aggressive as he was early on, Corey LaJoy in the 53 makes a pass for position of Hirschman. Just in front of them, Williams in the 50 car, the driver that's shocked a lot of people in qualifying, LaJoy, Moves to the inside now of Williams and takes that spot away. Just outside the top 10. So the 53 of LaJoy and the 60 of Hirschman are on the move, but the laps are winding down here as we close in on 55 to go. They are 12th and 13th respectively. Looking at the 12th place driver there, LaJoy in the 53. McLaughlin in the 77, he is your 10th place car. So with 10th and 11th there right together, there's Santos in the 44. 
Santos was ninth, and now 10th place driver McLaughlin challenging, 11th place driver LaJoy looking to go three wide again at Martinsville. Nearly went three wide, but made the inside groove pass. He's now gonna close in on the 77 of McLaughlin. That slow car just got out of the way of this battle, and oh, and, and the, oh, there's Craig Blutz, the 82 car, got maybe a piece of that slowing down machine where we saw a car to the outside just get out of the way of the battle that we were watching, and perhaps there was some contact there with the 82 of Lutz. Yeah, there was a silver car that looked like that was trying to get out of the way, and then Lutz's orange number 82 also involved in that, and that is the reason why we are under caution. But holy cow, I can feel up, up here in the booth. And we see Doug Kobe with a problem in the 10 car. It looks like a rear end or axle problem as there's smoke coming from the left rear of the six time champions car. That may have been Kobe trying to get out of the way. And here we see Lutz, a winner this season in 2022, as is Kobe. I think maybe those were the two cars that got together. We saw, as you mentioned, a kind of blackish gray kind of machine getting out of the way quickly. And with the mechanical problem that we're seeing here from Kobe, it could have been him. And I'm wondering if Lutz didn't maybe either hit the wall trying to avoid Kobe or hit Kobe as we see a little bit of damage to the left rear of that car as well. This is the 10 machine of Doug Kobe. Crew goes to work on the rear of that machine. A lot of smoke. That is a serious, serious problem, and we'll get a chance to take a look at what was happening in that area of the field here on the replay. Yes, it was. It was Kobe who was trying to get out of the way. Kobe moved up, slowing dramatically, and several cars able to react on the straightaway. So now we confirm that it was Kobe, and I'm wondering if the 82 of Lutz... Boy, did he lock up the brakes and maybe just slide up there? Judging by the fact that the 82 had a flat right front, I'm thinking he just, he didn't clear the 10 of Kobe, got into him, caused that flat right front going down into corner number three and caused the caution. And now we see Kobe is gonna go back to the hauler. When he came off of corner number two, when he drifted up high and tried to get out of the way, saw a little puff of smoke from the left rear of that machine. Boy, that's a shame. A three-time winner this season as he's been driving the 7NY for Tommy Baldwin Racing in certain events and took that machine to victory lane. He's the owner of this number 10 car, so uh, the hit that brought out the caution and this rear end damage comes right out of the driver's pocket as he's now a team owner and driver. Now, in the second half of this event, Mike, we have seen attrition. The three car of Ryan Priest, the 10 of Kobe, some of the top runners, drivers we expected to run up front all night long and challenge for the win, they're now behind the wall. And that's going to help the leaders because we saw the lap traffic that LaJoy was in during his stint at the front. As these cars are dropping out, it frees up space at the front of the field for your top five to duke it out. And speaking of top five, there we see the 79 of McKennedy who is leading the points and leading the race. Here's Catalano, the former Rookie of the Year of the Tour on pit lane. He's getting a couple of new tires. Catalano was uh, in the 15th position, so he's not gonna lose a whole lot here, as you mentioned, with some more cars out of this event. We're down to about 20-some cars left. Uh, Jamie Tomeno, the Jet, former champion in car 99, coming off of pit lane. JB Fortin coming off pit lane, and now Catalano does the same. When you talk about drivers out of this race or out of contention, well, you've got to include Craig Lutz because he was a winner last season on the tour, a winner this season on the tour. As we saw that car limping toward pit lane, he comes in eighth in the point standing. So he has something to lose here as well in that orange 82 machine. It looks like everything is okay. It looks like he's uh, going to be able to complete this race and maybe even do it on the lead lap. But boy, for a driver who's eighth in points coming in and a multi-time winner on this tour, it's got to be a little bit scary to think you might lose your 10th, lose a top 10 spot in the points based on somebody else's problem as he was collected in the uh, in the Kobe incident as Kobe tried to get out of the way. I find it interesting to note that there's drama now that's happening. We're talking about guys being patient, guys losing their patience, uh, rough running and drivers like Corey LaJoy and Matt Hirschman trying to work their way back up to the front. We haven't hardly at all to talk about the driver who's in the lead. John McKennedy has been very quiet, just logging laps, comes in here the championship point leader, and he's now at the front and has done it drama free. 
He's a drama-free guy. You know, all the things that you just <laughs> described about his race here in the Virginia is for Race Lovers 200. That's John McKennedy's personality as well. He's a quiet guy. He's a drama-free guy. Now, Justin Bond Senior in the 51 wants to create some drama because he's right behind him and needed to gain 11 points coming into this event. But you're exactly right. McKennedy has run exactly the race he's needed to by spending the first half in front of all the championship contenders and now spending the last quarter of the race in front of all challengers as the race leader in car number 79. So this race couldn't have gone better from McKennedy's standpoint. So as they clean up the racetrack with some fluids there in, uh, in turns one and two, which we can assume are from Kobe, we are working lap 152. It's going to be interesting. We also see the 16 here in the shot, championship contender earlier in this race, Ron Silk. He will get to go around. He will get the uh, pass, if you will, and get to go around. But it's going to be interesting to see if that car is still handling poorly because it seemed even after the couple of pit stops that that car was still very, very loose, even though he was not battling for a position there. It didn't seem like that car was back up to the way we saw it early in this event. So. I think we can say that Silk is maybe out of the championship running, although not mathematically. The eye test tells us that it's going to come down to McKennedy, Bonsignor, and perhaps Goodale, who we didn't talk about at all in the first half of this race. He's now climbing up. Goodale currently in sixth position, and it looked like he was about to pass the 22 of Kyle Bonsignor before all that broke loose with Kobe having the problem and the fluid on the track and the, the Lutz caution flag. But there we see Goodale in the 58, the most recent winner at Thompson. He's in championship contention. He was fourth of the four drivers, meaning 13 points back. When you said four drivers were all within 13 points, there's Goodale, who was the driver 13 back. And this is the first time, these last 15 laps or so, are really the first time he's been able to make any noise. So could it have been part of the plan to make sure that car is still in one piece and running at this juncture to move up there and challenge not only for the win, which, let's face it, when you need to gain 13 points, he pretty much has to take the checkered flag and hope for a little bit of misfortune from Bonsignor and from McKennedy. You see the oil dry there in this in the uh, picture. Uh, we saw Kobe having that smoke coming out. 51, the 51. That's off the 51 machine. Justin Bonsignor. Another championship contender with a problem. And that car seems to be sitting in a, in a strange yeah. posture. Oh, yes. And oh, the rear end has shifted on the 51 it's car. It's definitely smoking. He is dog walking down pit lane. Look at how that, I, I didn't see an incident with that car. I'm not sure if he was maybe a part of Kobe slowing down, but there is now significant damage. And look at that rear end all out of kilter. That machine is not going to be able to perform at all. And as we're thinking that perhaps Silk is out of championship contention, Bonsignor is now absolutely out of championship contention. That car came down pit road as crooked as anything, and they are not going to be able to compete with the car in that condition. Boy, a tough break for the driver. We talked about it, Mike. His season has been up and down, feast or famine, wreckers or checkers type of scenario. Four wins on the season, yet he's struggling uh, just to stay in contention to win a championship. It's either, it's either great or terrible. When you described that at the start of this race, you were talking about his season as a whole, and haven't these first 154 laps been exactly the same thing? He struggled early, got himself to second, threatening to take the lead, and now this. So this 160 lap compartment is a real reflection of his entire season. Now we see Silk who gets to go around and tag the tail of the field in car 16. And boy, McKennedy, who saw in his mirror a championship contender fall out, sees out the windshield a championship contender go to the tail of the field. John McKennedy has to be feeling pretty darn good right now in that 79 car as we are 155 laps into this event and he is out in front, not only in front of all the championship contenders, but once again, out in front of every car in this field. Lights are out on that pace vehicle, so we will go green next time by. When we take the green flag, we'll be at lap 156. McKennedy with the 7 NY of fluid. Then Kraus in the 24. Didn't expect to see him up after the way that his night began. Ryan Newman is in contention here. Kyle Vaughn in the 22. And keep your eyes on the 58 of Eric Goodale, about the only remaining championship threat to leader McKennedy in car 58 as he restarts from sixth. Everybody sorts their way through the back straightaway, down into three and four. They're double file behind the lead duo. 
Ryan Newman in that yellow and black car to the outside of Goodale's 58 machine. We talked about his win record. He certainly has more laps at Martinsville than any other driver in this field. And he's now in the position of challenging for six, losing a spot there to Goodale. But up front, it's McKennedy, then Blewett. Krause doing a great job getting himself in that in a top five spot and clinging to fourth position now right behind the 22 of Kyle Bonsignor. Max McLaughlin wheel to wheel with Ryan Newman. There's Corey LaJoy in the black 53. Under the 44 of Santos. Now Hirschman trying to do the same in the black 60 car. He gets the preferred line under the 44. Oh, and there's Whoa. some. Oh, that was close racing right there. There's nearly some contact as the 53 of LaJoy and the 77 of McLaughlin nearly blocked nerve bars there briefly. I think Hirschman had to get on the binders to avoid any contact there. And that allowed Santos in the 44 to creep back up alongside of Hirschman. Now, this is a power move on the outside. That 53 car of LaJoy is strong. If he can do that on the outside here at Martinsville, that signifies that 53 car is tough. And he has passed Ryan Newman a many time winner on the tour, closing in on Andrew Krause, the young New Jersey driver in car 24. As he's doing that, Hirschman is getting left behind. There's a side-by-side -side battle there, the 77 of McLaughlin and the 44 of Santos, and that is halting the progress of Hirschman, who will have to deal with not only McLaughlin and Santos, but eventually Newman. Four cars all clustered right together there. This is the battle for 7th, 8th, 9th, and 10th. And now the 53 of LaJoy, who was so strong early in this event, having trouble getting around the 24 of Kraus. McLaughlin still wheel to wheel with Newman. A little bit of contact there as McLaughlin takes the spot away. Max goes up to the seventh position. Ryan Newman back to eighth. Hirschman in ninth. Hirschman clearly a fast car if he can get some room, but the fast car of LaJoy is not able to complete the pass of Andrew Krause. A little contact there. Krause, the New Jersey driver in car 24. And the 53 of LaJoy. LaJoy used that bumper a couple of times tonight, and you see it bent straight up there as he made some light contact with Krause. Now taking the inside lane. Is this enough to get by? Three wide. Look at McLaughlin enter the picture. Young Max McLaughlin makes it three wide going into the turn, and somehow we all stick the green flag, stays out of the curb. Records entry of Max McLaughlin gains another position. He is up to sixth. Incredible action here, 6th, 7th, and 8th. It's McLaughlin, it's LaJoy, and it's Kraus, and McLaughlin has not made any noise to this point in the race. Working lap number 166, and could Max be the new fastest car on the speedway? And Max McLaughlin in that blue 77 is in fifth position. Quite a ways back from our race leader, McKennedy. Once again, McLaughlin started this race in 20. He had moved up to threaten for top five positions at one point, but now securely in the top five and able to hold the 53 of LaJoy at bay. And the 77 just turned his fastest lap of the race. McLaughlin is on a tear. He's got Corey LaJoy right with him, but Max just turned his fastest lap. Boy, let's see if Max in the fifth position can gain on Goodale. Now remember, just in front of him, it's the 58 of Eric Goodale, a championship contender there's some distance of racetrack that McLaughlin's going to need to make up. But the next car that he will challenge is a driver who's in championship contention. There we see Goodale in the 58, the winner of the most recent event at Thompson. And he's got a few car lengths between himself and Kyle Bonsignor. And Goodale, the number 58, also won here at Martinsville last year. This event was contested in April. It was the first event of the 2021 season. Now it's the last event of the 2022 season, but Goodale in that 58 knows how to go to Ruoff Mortgage Victory Lane here at Martinsville Speedway. And he speaks very highly of this racetrack even before he won. This was one of his first trade, great favorite racetracks to come to. And that win last year just solidified the Martinsville Speedway's place in his heart. Now we see the 60 of Hirschman getting around Kraus. So Hirschman has now passed Newman. He's passed Kraus after getting by the 44 of Santos. Can he close the gap between himself 
and the 53 of LaJoy, who was running right behind the 77 of McLaughlin. As you mentioned, with McLaughlin turning the fastest lap of the race, I don't think in these final 27 laps, I don't think Hirschman's going to be able to contend for the clock. He's definitely going to need a caution to bunch the field back up as we are closing in on 25 to go. And of course, as you mentioned earlier, McKennedy, who we see here leading in the 79 car, it's been all about the championship cup that we've talked about. He may leave here with the coveted grandfather clock and the championship cup as Blewett is now a good four or five car lengths behind your race leader and points leader. John McKennedy down in corner number one. We talked about it. It's been a clean race for him. We didn't really even so to speak no he was here for the longest time and then all of a sudden after that round of pit stops that crazy round of pit stops where we saw the joy come in we saw Hirschman come in for the first time lo and behold the seas part look who's in first John McKennedy he has worked this master 24 laps to go and to your point the only reason we were talking about it was the points lead right we were only talking about the race he was not a factor at all for more than 100 laps of this event there's Goodale a remaining championship contender and really the only guy that at this point stands any kind of a shot at dethroning McKennedy from the points I, I feel like McKennedy played us <laughs> that's exactly right. <laughs> he certainly played everybody else in this field, and I think you can include us in that as well. A masterful drive and strategy for McKennedy's team, but there's Goodale, who needed to gain 13 points on McKennedy coming into this race, and that 77 of McLaughlin, as we talked about, the fastest car right now, I believe, on the speedway, right up to Goodale's back bumper. Goodale doesn't want to surrender this position because that could mean valuable points, but McLaughlin wants to take the grandfather clock home, so he and LaJoy in the 53 race only for the win both occasional part-time racers on this tour and both couldn't care less about championship points in this event fortunately they're treating the championship candidate with kid gloves no contact made there both of them make their way past Goodale's 58 machine again good for McKennedy that his championship nemesis Goodale is two more positions back so now we see McLaughlin up to the fourth position it's gonna be Kyle Bonsignor in the 22 the next machine that will Loom in front of the 77 of McLaughlin and the 53 of LaJoy. Here we see McKennedy, your leader. It does seem that the 7 of Blewett is closing in just a little bit. I'm not holding a stopwatch. I'm not staring at the scoring. I'm just using the eye test to say that there's about a car length and a half less distance between those two than when we checked in on them about four laps ago. And you, you know that Blewett's going to race him well, but... How hard will McKennedy race him? Should Blewett in that seven machine get to his rear bumper? That's a very good question. Both of these drivers have one victory in 2022 with only occasional starts. Blewett is not in any kind of a points position to worry about that, but he does know that McKennedy is vying for a title. So again, the politeness that you talked about earlier, these drivers have a respect for one another. They race each other week in, week out. I can't imagine that Blewett is going to like pounding the rear bumper of a guy who's about to secure a championship. Even if he, if McKennedy doesn't secure the race, I think right about now with Goodale's position and Silk and, of course, Bonsignor out of the race, I think we can pretty much say that McKennedy is on his way to a championship and Blewett's going to respect that even if he can reel in and challenge for this race win. Coming to 15 laps to go this time by. Your leader, McKennedy, about a car length between himself and Blewett. Really gets off the corner well, does the 79. Puts some distance between himself and second running Blewett. Blewett really dives it into the corner. Through the center of the corner, he's so good, but off the corner, McKennedy just pulls him a car length or two. We talked earlier about Ryan Priest being well known for working on his own cars. McKennedy, the same thing. I can't tell you how many times on the tour this year I've seen McKennedy working. Caution. Done, hey, we've got a caution flag, and this could shape the end of this race in a very different way. As up in turns one and two, we see a machine that's now writing itself. I believe that is the... Is that the 50, 50 of Williams? It is. Oh, the tremendous run that Williams has had all night long. Ronnie Williams from Ellington, Connecticut, started in third position and hung with the top five almost all race long. It was looking to be a career night for Williams here at Martinsville. And then a spin. I didn't see the incident happen. It happened in turn one. 
And after the pit stops, he was mired back in the 18th position, but had a car that was certainly capable of passing several of the machines in front of him. Still, it's been a banner night for Williams, all things considered, with the great qualifying run and maintaining a top five position for most of the night. And as... Lap 187, and McKennedy in the 79 car that had about two car lengths on the seven is now going to have to defend that lead side well, by side. <laughs> we talked about Hirschman needing a caution. Corey LaJoy needed a caution. The 77, the McLaughlin needed a caution. Here's the caution, and here's the race leader in the 79 of McKennedy is also the championship point leader. And you mentioned we're gonna double file restarts. Well, wow. Yeah, we're going to assume, as we were watching the lap times and watching McLaughlin and watching LaJoy and Hirschman, I'm going to go out on a limb and say that neither the 79 of McKennedy, your leader, nor the seven, the seven NY machine of Jimmy Blewett are the fastest cars on the racetrack. I think they are, I think they're maybe fourth, fifth, and sixth yeah. fastest of the drivers. I would agree. And I would think that McLaughlin in the 77, LaJoy in the 53, and that number 60 of Hirschman, I'm gonna guess that all three of those cars are faster than McKennedy, faster than Blewett, and faster than Kyle Bonsignor in the 22 car, who's been very quietly maintaining third position. Now, Goodale in the 58 looked pretty strong. He's a championship contender. He's gonna dig as deep as he can to get as close to the rear bumper as of McKennedy as he can. Oh! Oh, and the fastest car on the speedway has stopped as we were watching the lap times of Max McLaughlin. Now, this could be a safety thing. Maybe he has a belt loose. Maybe he's uh, we're gonna see what this is. But if it's a mechanical issue, Corey LaJoy is gonna be smiling because the car directly in front of him is going to be retired and LaJoy will move up to a row two restart position with less than 10 laps to go as the green flag will be unfurled. We're working lap 189 right now and while the original caution flag incident was about to be cleaned up and deemed safe for racing on the Martinsville surface, now the McLaughlin car has stopped and we're not sure why. And we've seen this all night, Mike. One by one, some of the top contenders have had something happen to him. Justin Bonsignor had a, a rear end issue. Uh, the three machine of Ryan Priest had an issue. Now the 77 of McLaughlin all night long. The attrition has come into play. These 200 laps here at Martinsville was more than some of these cars could handle. And you know, the one thing that was talked about all day long in the pits were brakes, and they have not been a factor. No. Granted, it's a cooler weather night, but none of the incidents, none of the problems have been related to brakes, which all these teams spent so many hours in the shop preparing for. Good job by all the teams, because what we saw one car with a little bit of glowing orange, that standard Martinsville glow that we talk about, it hasn't been prevalent tonight. So the teams prepared well to come to this 200 lap event tonight, and things far out of their control are bringing top-notch contenders behind the wall. Working now lap number 190 under caution. McKennedy, who's going to have a rear view mirror that includes Corey LaJoy in the 53 and Big Money Matt Hirschman in the 60 car. This is going to be a wild finish. You know, again, we're not talking about the 22 of Kyle Bonsignor. And the only reason I'm not mentioning him is because he had fallen way back behind the seven of Blewett. Uh, even, though the, even though he's holding down the third spot, I have a hunch that he is not among the top three or four fastest cars on the racetrack, but I believe the three or four fastest cars are behind him and not in front of him. As we see uh, Blewett and the other drive, drivers trying to get some heat into those tires. And look at this on pit lane. He was out of fuel is the hunch now. McLaughlin who runs out of fuel with the fastest car on the racetrack. And of course, if you got 70 or 80 pounds less fuel, that's gonna make you maybe a little bit faster. But he is on pit lane to take gas only. Heartbreaking situation for a driver who because of the caution was in a great position to possibly take home tonight's grandfather clock. Here we go. Coming back to green at Martinsville. Nine laps remaining. Points leader John McKennedy leads the race in car 79. Back up to full speed in turn one with Jimmy Blewett outside. Jimmy Blewett got a great start on the outside of that number seven machine. They're side by side up the back straightaway. 
Oh, contact hang on. And McKennedy, the championship contender, spins to the inside as Kyle Bonsignor leaped over his front wheel. Blewett is involved. Many, many cars at the back are involved. And McKennedy spins that car right around. There's heavy nerf bar damage. There's probably some front suspension damage as there was a car riding on top of his left front wheel briefly. But everybody fighting for the race win may have taken a toll on the championship hopes of John McKennedy. Lap 193, we are working as the caution flag is out again. And an incident at the very front of the pack changes the complexion of the race and the season. Dean, this is just shocking development with seven laps to go. We, we knew it was gonna be crazy. I honestly, I didn't know it was gonna be that crazy. I really <laughs> thought that with a championship on the line that the drivers would be much, much more careful than what we just saw. There we see Kyle Bonsignor who was vaulted in the air over the front wheel of McKennedy, who was at the time the race leader. He's headed down pit lane and now LaJoy and Hirschman are the two cars lined up directly behind the pace car with Ryan Newman and Eric Goodale, the remaining championship contender, restarting from fourth spot. Goodale needed 13 points to claim his first career championship in the NASCAR Wheel and Modified Tour. Coming into this race, he's the red and white car that slips through this incident, but here we see contact at the front of the field, McKennedy in the 79, and it looks like it was the 53 of LaJoy who may have gotten into him as the seven of Blewett spun. He got hit by Beers. Now let's watch from this angle and see if it was contact with, it was indeed LaJoy. LaJoy turned into the left, into the right rear of McKennedy, which turned him into the seven of Blewett. And again, the red and white 58 of Goodale skates through all of this as a championship contender. Look at Kyle Bonsignor sailing in the air over that left front of McKennedy. McKennedy obviously will not make a pit stop regardless of what he thinks might be wrong with that car. He's got to maintain the track position and maintain a 13 point advantage over Goodale who's now in fourth spot. LaJoy gets into the rear of McKennedy, turns McKennedy into the seven of Blewett. McKennedy is shown in the 13th position. Goodale is shown in the fourth spot. Now we'll see if that changes before we get a green flag with just five laps to go here. Pit lane is closed and I can't imagine that McKennedy is going to make a pit stop. And boy, you hit the nail on the head. McKennedy had the race exactly the way he wanted. It was drama free. And here comes a driver with a very fast race car who led a pile of laps early, trying to get back to the front after two pit stops for tires and fuel. And now we see the points leader back in 13th. Unbelievable developments here as there are five laps remaining. But you can see that the left front of McKennedy is not in the position that that suspension needs to be. There is damage up to the left front, but as long as the tires stay inflated. So the question becomes with a modified belly pan riding across the front of a Hoosier racing slick, does it maintain air for another five laps? And who knows if maybe one of the right, one of the rear tires may have been hit. If a, if a bead was broken by one of the Nerf bars of another car, it could be losing air. The Nerf bar damage is not gonna be a problem for the 79. But he is pulling up. We've got 17 cars, Mike, on the lead lap. 17 lead lap, and it's a 13 point gap coming into tonight between the 58 of Goodale and the 79 of McKennedy. So there is your race leader, LaJoy, who made the contact that triggered that incident. Then Hirschman in second in the 60 car. Hirschman doing a great job of getting through it, as did Goodale. Ryan Newman restarts third. Of course, he's capable of winning anytime he gets in a modified. We mentioned his high winning percentage in only a handful of starts on this tour, but Goodale in the 58, the red and white car that will line up outside of row two for the restart, 
may be in command of the points chase based on how this shakes out. If McKennedy's car is not able to complete these final three laps, or if he falls further back in the field, Eric Goodale is trying to do the quickest math that he's done in his life behind the wheel of the 58 car. If he can gain one or two more positions, we're going to have to wait for the NASCAR officials to bang out the adding machines and stare at receipts before we can call a title champion tonight. Looks like we're going to take the green at lap 198. It's going to be a green-white checkered shootout. If it ended right now, I'm told that McKennedy would have a five-point advantage. So let's see if the 79 car is fully up to speed. Let's see if Goodale can gain a position. And let's see if Hirschman in the 60 or race leader LaJoy in the 53 can take on the Martinsville grandfather clock. Green flag is out oh, with two laps to go. Terrible restart for Hirschman. And that cost Goodale a couple of spots. Goodale drops back two or three spots as a result of the Hirschman restart. Good news for McKennedy as Goodale drops back. And good news for Corey LaJoy. He is the first one to see the white flag. Final trip around Martinsville Speedway in the 75th anniversary of this venerable Virginia Oval. Final round of the NASCAR Wheeland Modified Tour for 2022. And collecting his first ever victory on the tour here at Martinsville, the car number 53 of Corey LaJoy. Second spot. Goes to the 60 of Hirschman, third to Ryan Newman, fourth to Bobby Santos, the third, fifth to Anthony Nacella, who made a great recovery. And there is your winner. In a rare start in the NASCAR Wheeland Modified Tour, a son of the Northeast where these cars are most prevalent, picks up the checkered flag here in Martinsville, Virginia. And the championship goes to John McKennedy in car number 79. In spite of the near catastrophe with just five laps to go, the number 79 car rolls to a stop as your 2022 NASCAR Wheeland Modified Tour Champion. Dean, an unbelievable final segment of this race. It just, boy, boy, I knew it was gonna get crazy, especially those last 50 laps after we had that pit stop. I knew it was gonna get crazy. I did not expect it to get that crazy there is your winner, Corey LaJoy. An unbelievable event. This race was a roller coaster just like the season. And you've got to wonder if Blewett in the seven is congratulating McKennedy or not aware that it was the, sh the contact from LaJoy that turned McKennedy right into the seven car. We're going to take another look back at this restart. And it was the 60 on the outside of Hirschman who got a little bit loose and had to back off. And that's what sent Goodale looking for space to not crash because at that point, Goodale was within five points of the championship, then lost a couple of positions. That restart was chaos. Ryan Newman, second place at the wave of the white flag and Hirschman gets by him on the final lap. And there you see the crew of the championship driver, John McKennedy. They were, uh, they were pretty worried they, you could see have, those last uh, couple of restarts, they were concerned. The driver leading the race in championship standings has a car on top of his hood with four laps to go. That's the kind of craziness that the Martinsville Speedway, Virginia is for Race Lovers 200 produced tonight, and a championship will be handed to the 79 of McKennedy. And now coming back to the start finish line, your race winner, in car number 53, his first on the tour, it's Corey LaJoy. My grandfather clock will go to Corey LaJoy as he starts off his race weekend here with the finish of the 2022 season for the NASCAR Wheeland Modified Tour. And unofficially being told that it was a six point advantage for John McKennedy, which means that that restart with Goodale diving to the inside and bouncing off of other cars to maintain a straight position, boy, that, that was very, very costly. And you almost want to go back and see if Goodale was able to maintain a second or third place finish. That six point margin would have evaporated for McKennedy. But McKennedy, your champion for 2022 and a victory lane celebration for the very first time in NASCAR modified competition for the driver of the number 53. Now a resident of Concord, North Carolina, driving the Curb Records number 53, Corey LaJoy, headed for a victory lane celebration.
And Corey LaJoy led so many laps here, Mike. We knew he had a fast car. We knew he had perhaps the fastest car. It was all gonna come down to pit strategy. It was gonna come down to racecraft to see if LaJoy, who doesn't run these cars very often, to see if he had the race craft to pull off the win here. And you remember that pit stop was awkwardly long. He was the longest car on pit road, and that's why he was so far back. And as the car rolls to a stop, when you look at the right side tires, there's white residue from the Martinsville wall. He got into the outside retaining wall pretty hard on that final restart and still was able to guide that car to victory lane. And on another shot, you'll see that as the Hoosier is completely scuffed off the tires, replaced by white paint on that side. So he did a great job maintaining control as well. We know it was his contact that triggered that incident, but to keep that car pointed the right direction makes it a well-deserved victory when chaos like that breaks out with three laps to go. Chaos. <laughs> That's, That's exactly what we have. <laughs> As you mentioned, the championship point leader has another car on his hood. That's that's chaos. And now pulling into victory lane, we will send things down to Jamie. Jesse. Corey LaJoy getting ready to climb out of the car here in victory lane at Martinsville. The beautiful grandfather clock up there on the stage awaiting its new home in the LaJoy house. Here he is, your winner, Corey LaJoy. First wheel and modified win. First Martinsville clock. Corey, what does this win mean to you? I came here for a clock, so uh, I just want to thank all the fans for coming out on a Thursday night. Uh, really and truly is as much fun as this was. We got mired back in traffic there on that, that uh, pit stop, uh, but just a great car. Uh, great uh, TFR, I don't even know what you call these things, modified. So just thanks uh, to Bono and Elizabeth and Rob Fuller for allowing me to come do it and have some fun on a Thursday night. I told the wife I got the room picked out for the uh, grandfather clock, so I'd love to try for one on Sunday, but right now this one's pretty good. But uh, also, super kudos just to the modified guys. These guys are the lifeblood of the sport, man. These guys drive down from the Northeast. They do it for nothing. They do it because of the love of the sport. So I don't even know who won the championship. John McKennedy? <laughs> uh, I thought I screwed up his championship hopes there for a minute. He kind of pinched me in the fence. We can talk about that later. Um, so kudos to John, kudos to Tommy Ball and that seven for that championship because I mean, they got, these guys that run modifieds are real racers. And while I have you here, if you don't mind, Kim, we talked about it a bit now. From your perspective, what did happen on that final caution there? A little bit of frustration coming from a few other drivers. Uh, yeah, I'm sure I'd be pissed too if I got dumped for the lead, but uh, it was just tight and uh, John pinched me in the fence a little bit out of two and my left front called his right rear and, and turned him into Jimmy. Uh, Jimmy's a really good friend of mine, so I hated to see him back backwards as well, but uh, I do love seeing this 53 car victory lane though, I do problem. I, kn I know that. Well, and it was a family affair here tonight. You had your brother Casey as the jack man. You did mention you had a bit of an issue on pit road. Do you have any words for the LaJoy family there in the pits? Hey, well, it actually worked out to be a blessing because the, st the stop was so bad we couldn't lose any more spots if we came back down and put gas in it. So it was a, it was a blessing because the 77 stayed out and tried to make it. He ran out of gas. So, the fact that my brother, Zach Witt, pastor of Multiple Lake Norman, Ryan Flores, front tire changer of Ryan Blaney, uh, had to slow his modified stop pit, pit stop of all time, that actually won us the race. A blessing in disguise earned a modified clock down here. Martinsville clock going home with Corey LaJoy. Corey, congratulations on the first modified win. Thanks, Jesse. That's Corey LaJoy, your winner down here in Victory Lane in Martinsville. Thank you, Jesse, as a victory lane celebration going on and soon to be a championship celebration going on with the McKennedy team. And as LaJoy mentioned, the owner's championship title had already been clinched by the 7NY team of Tommy Baldwin Racing with Jimmy Blewett at the controls tonight who had a, a run that was nearly victorious as he was in the front row for that final restart. And you see now the Wheeland Modified Tour flag has been handed to the driver of car number 79, the driver who has earned his first championship title in the NASCAR Wheeland Modified Tour and only his second full season campaign of his career, John McKennedy from Chelmsford, Massachusetts, the driver of 
car number 79 will be taking that flag around and there will be a championship presentation and of course as Jesse mentioned that beautiful grandfather clock there in victory lane is going to be presented here just momentarily but Boy, settling down from all of that chaos, as we've used that word a couple of times already, the final two restarts and everything that played out for LaJoy to find himself in victory lane here at the Martinsville Speedway during the 75th anniversary celebration of this oval made it an amazingly memorable night. We see the grandfather clock now being put into position. We are going to throw it down to Victory Lane for the trophy presentation. Here is track president at Martinsville Speedway, Clay Campbell. Corey, congratulations, man, on winning the Virginia's for Love, Racing Lovers 200. And the prize, grandfather clock, goes to you that everybody wants. What do you think of that? Thanks, Clay. That's what we came here for. We came for the clock. Uh, honestly, man, I don't want to take up too much time for the for the champion because the night's about them. Uh, but I am glad this one is coming home with me. It's one of the uh, one of those ones you want in your living room, and that sucker's going to be. I'm going to wind that sucker every day, Clay. Uh, congratulations, Val Gavi with Virginia Tourism. Val. On behalf of Virginia Tourism, I'd like to congratulate you. Congratulations on a great win. As the celebration continues in victory lane with that outstanding clock and race winner, Corey LaJoy will run down the finish for you here of the Virginia is for Racing Lovers 200. Your winner, Corey LaJoy in car 53. Second place with a last lap pass. It's Matt Hirschman, the Pennsylvanian, coming home second in car number 60. The Indiana native, Ryan Newman, steered car number 39 to a third place finish. Coming home in fourth place after he had been front to back and back to front, Bobby Santos the third, the former tour champion in car 44, nails down fourth position. Anthony Nocella was involved in a caution flag incident, made multiple pit stops, and he claims the fifth position with a late race rally, a great run for the driver of car number 92. Coming home in the sixth position unofficially, it's Andrew Krause, the New Jersey driver in car number 24, finishing in seventh position. He came in as a championship contender and the most recent race winner, it was car number 58, Eric Goodale. Finishing one spot behind him in the eighth position, your 2022 NASCAR Whelan Modified Tour Rookie of the Year, Austin Beers in car number 64. Finishing in ninth position, the New York veteran and former Tour Rookie of the Year in car number 54, Tommy Catalano. Finishing in the 10th position, J.B. Fortin in car number 34 after he had a flat tire and made a, a mid-race pit stop. Coming home in the 11th position, the driver who entered this event only six points back in second in the points race, Ron Silk drove the number 16 car to an 11th place finish after that spin on the backstretch. Coming home in 12th position unofficially, it was just enough to secure the 2022 Modified Championship for John McKennedy. Finishing in 13th position, former Modified Champion, Jamie the Jet Tomano, the New Jersey driver steering car number 99, and finishing 14th after an outstanding qualifying run today, it was Ed McCarthy in car number 20. Finishing 15th unofficially, the veteran of all forms of NASCAR racing, Joey Coulter, the Florida driver in car number 02, and finishing 16th after that late race incident, Illinois' Kyle Bonsignor in car number 22. Finishing in the 17th position after restarting second late in the race, New Jersey's Jimmy Blewett in the car owner champion number 7NY. And 18th position was claimed by car number 2, Chuck Hosfeld. 
Finishing in 19th position was the 50 car of Ronnie Williams. Finishing in 20th position, the 36 car of veteran Dave Sapienza. Coming home in 21st spot, it was Spencer Davis, the Georgia driver in car number 29. Finishing in the 22nd position, young Tyler Ripkema in car 32. 23rd place unofficially scored to the number 82 of Craig Lutz, a winner on the tour this season. Finishing 24th was Jimmy Gerster in the 55 car. Coming home in 25th position, the driver of car number 26, Gary McDonald. And after having the fastest car late in the race, mechanical issues relegated Max McLaughlin in car number 77 to the 26th position. 27th place was claimed by the driver of car number 18, Ken Hagee. 28th position, the 0-1 of Melissa Fifield. Finishing in 29th position was championship contender Justin Bonsignor in car 51. Unofficially finishing in 30th place with a mechanical problem was Doug Kobe, the six-time champion in car number 10. Finishing in 31st, it was the driver of the bowler racing number three, Ryan Priest, a former tour champion. Finishing in 32nd position, it was Brian, Brian Doze. And finishing in 33rd position, former NASCAR Cup Series champion Bobby Labonte in car 17. 34th position was Patrick Emmerling in the 07 car, the fastest driver in practice who had a mechanical problem. And finishing 35th, the first car to drop out of the race was Walter Sutcliffe in car number 78. So a complete field run down there, Dean, and still trying to curtail the excitement of everything that happened at the end of that race. I think I wasn't even in competition and my heart rate is still through the roof. I'm trying, I'm trying to catch my breath too, Mike. <laughs> as we see the uh, championship driver and the championship car owner team uh, able to pull away there in turn number three and they're going to roll down the front straight away here and get the honors that are so deserved to them mckennedy with a victory donuts on the front stretch at martinsville you know this was emotional for all the fans this was emotional for us this was emotional for the teams i cannot imagine being john mckennedy as the race leader five laps from claiming a championship title with a race win in the finale and being turned toward the outside wall with cars driving over top of me and three laps to go. I, I can't possibly imagine the emotion of that. And this burnout, as you said, well deserved because the sigh of relief coming from the man in that car right now has got to be the most weight lifting feeling ever to get through this event and still secure the championship with what occurred in those final five laps. Yeah, how do you regroup after that, I wonder? It's I a good thing the offseason is coming because there's no, th he is going to be caution, spent. After oh. the caution, how do you regroup knowing that everything that you've worked for all season long is right there, you're going to go and you're going to cruise and you're going to take it, and all heck breaks loose. I can see the damage on the left front from here. Look at how close yep. the left rear wheel is to the chassis. There is major suspension damage to the left front of that car, and he knew he was going to have to steer that machine for two more laps at full speed in order to arrive where he has right here, right now, and that is on the champion stage for the NASCAR Wheel and Modified Tour. Earlier today, we had a chance to see the hardware and all four drivers got an opportunity to look at, touch, and pose with that cup should they be the ones to claim it at the end of tonight's Virginia is for Racing Lovers 200. And boy, just look at that face. I, I wish I could hear that conversation right now because that man has been through an awful lot in the last 35 minutes and is about to be rewarded with the ultimate prize in modified racing the Championship Cup for the NASCAR Wheeling Tour. Congratulations from crew, from... Boy, I, I can't even imagine at this point to climb out of that car right now. He's going, if, if I'm John McKennedy, I'm gonna have a couple of beverages tonight and sleep for about four days. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the champion of the NASCAR Wheel and Modified Tour for 2022 is John McKennedy. And now we send it down to Jesse Punch for the championship celebration. Jonathan, you are officially the 2022 Wheel and Modified Champion. Describe your emotions right now. 
emotions. <laughs> I tell you, it's uh, very up and down. We won the championship. It's it's amazing. This is so satisfying. Very tough summer. The amount of work that went in this car. Um, my car owners, Tim, Cheryl Lapine, all my pit guys, all my sponsors, middle section interiors, wool wood brakes, Valvoline, Christopher's towing, um, young landscaping, Robert Yates engines. It's the whole team, and that's what got me here today. I just don't know what else to say. This is unbelievable. I, um, I've won multiple championships up north. A handful of the modified championships in other series, as well as ISMA. And then we, a NASCAR modified champion is just awesome. I am so happy. Um, but I'm not going to lie, getting wrecked there with a few to go was a huge... That was a bummer. We had a really good car. The guys gave me an awesome car. I thought we were in a great position. And in the middle of the back straightaway, I felt a good bump. And next thing you know, I was totally sideways out of control. Um, not too sure what the car behind me was thinking. But at the end of the day, we are champions. Yes! Yeah! John McKennedy, he's done talking. He's ready to celebrate. And the 79 team, they are your champions here tonight 2022 nascar wheel and modified tour champion jonathan mckennedy jonathan mckennedy congratulations thank you jesse and the celebration will surely go long into the night as this race will be long long remembered uh, dean the nascar modified tour has been coming to this track for the bulk of the 75 years in its existence and i don't know that there have been as many storylines and consequently now as many memories made in any 200 lap event ever put on by this tour at this facility. I love the fact that the Modifieds are back here at Martinsville Speedway. It's been the last two years now back to back. We talked about the 2021 season started with the NASCAR Wheel and Modified Tours. Here the 2022 season, their season ends at Martinsville Speedway. I just think I love how these cars race at this track. Um, I think it is a perfect match. It, it is just, uh, it, it, they're fun cars to watch, and they're really fun cars to watch here at Martinsville. I love it. NASCAR's oldest touring division at one of NASCAR's most venerable speedways, and the 75th year of Martinsville Speedway concludes the modified tour for 2022 in a way that no one could have ever predicted. You were great at predicting things early on in this race. <laughs> Even you could not have possibly no. seen what was going to transpire in those final 10 nope. laps. No, it was crazy. No, I did not see the uh, I did not see the leader getting turned in the middle of the back straightaway and uh, 10, 12 cars piling up into turn number three with just a handful of laps to go. But that's what happens, you know. When you look back on a race, or the more races you watch, you, you sense, I think this is a turning point. I don't know about that. Ooh, let's look back on that and see if that. So you kind of pick up on those things, but I certainly did not see a restart, a green-white checkered restart with the leader of the race being the leader of the championship points and uh, all chaos breaking loose. Well, we're going to be talking about this one for a very long time, and we'll certainly be talking about it when the 2023 season for the NASCAR Whelan Modified Tour kicks off next spring. 19 events on the schedule for next year, and uh, John McKennedy will be introduced for the first time in his career as a champion of the tour when 2023 turns the page. We're going to once again turn it down to Victory Lane for the championship trophy presentation. You might need to. Started really coming into your own around Claremont, of course, winning that race. An absolute amazing feat that you and this team have done. It's been a pleasure watching this team mature together with you throughout the 2022 season. So on behalf of the France family and all of us at NASCAR, it's my honor, my honor to present, present you with your first of what I really feel is probably going to be many NASCAR Wheel of Modified Tour Champions. We're very proud to have you as our champion. Congratulations. <laughs> Pop, pop. 
words very well said by NASCAR's own Jimmy Wilson on the championship stage as John McKennedy poses with the hardware for the very first time in that beautiful NASCAR Wheel and Championship Cup. A season of lots of memories, but certainly none. <laughs> As, as I, I'm, I'm still groping for words, you know, I, we were talking about chaos, and that was even before the last five laps had occurred. Uh, this race is going to go down in infamy, depending on who you're a fan of, uh, and, and also in the great lore of McKennedy's career, as he talked about the championships that he's earned in other forms of modified racing at weekly speedways and a super modified touring series championship with the ISMA, and certainly to take home that cup and be presented with it from Jimmy Wilson of NASCAR is a f the fulfillment of a life's goal for any driver, McKennedy in particular. And he's got a ring coming his way at the championship banquet and the title of NASCAR champion, says John McKennedy. A hard fought battle tonight to win the war and McKennedy celebrates on the stage. The Virginia is for Racing Lovers 200 is now an event etched in history that will be talked about for many years to come. McKennedy has a long night of media, photos, and eventually celebrations as he and his team had, you know, there were a couple of times this season when you talked about the roller coaster of Justin Bond Senior's season, and of course, McKennedy certainly much, much more consistent than that, but there were a couple of times when McKennedy had terrible qualifying runs and had to rebuild the front suspension in order to race consistently and, and get a top 10 or top five finish. So this team has worked very hard, as he alluded to earlier in his interview, and it is indeed a very well-deserved honor just to get through the last five laps of this event to make this happen. That's squarely on McKennedy shoulders that he was able to guide that car those final two laps and not get in even more trouble than he did when everything broke loose on that final restart so certainly a team victory and the driver champion for 2022 McKennedy right there in the heart of the celebration to take home the cup team and the team picture and the team gathers on stage and really that that picture right there kind of says it all doesn't it it's a team effort a team sport NASCAR racing at its finest So after this celebration, we will be presenting the owner's championship to Tommy Baldwin Racing. We mentioned the number seven NY car repeatedly tonight with Jimmy Blewett at the wheel, was in contention for the win to take home the big grandfather clock tonight. That team has had three different driver score victories in 2022 with Mike Christopher Jr., Doug Kobe, and Blewett as well. So that presentation will be coming up as McKennedy receives the driver's championship on the stage. There we see Blewett about to take the owner's flag and celebrate in victory lane with Tommy Baldwin racing. And of course, we're here at Martinsville where the Cup Series and the Xfinity Series compete on an annual basis. And Tommy Baldwin racing is a name not only familiar just to modified fans, but Tommy Baldwin racing has made an impact at nearly every level of NASCAR racing. It's great to see Tommy Baldwin still in the sport, getting back to his roots, so to speak. Uh, from the Northeast, even when he came down south to go NASCAR Cup racing and, and Xfinity Series racing, still uh, from the Northeast. And it's great to see him back in the Northeast and giving back to the sport. And uh, not only is he giving back to the sport, not only, at least it, not only is he staying connected to the Modified Series, but he's winning owner's championships. That's pretty cool to see. We talked earlier about the Lenny Bowler number three team that uh, tonight, of course, had Ryan Priest at the wheel, and they retired early from this event. But when you look back at some of the drivers that steered that number three car, many of them had to go wheel to wheel with Tiger Tom Baldwin, Tommy's father, in that black number seven NY that was a stalwart team on this tour for 35 years. Uh, Tom Baldwin Sr. was a championship winning driver all through the Northeast at weekly speedways. He was a winning driver on the tour. He was one of the fiercest competitors to ever strap into a modified. Tom Baldwin Sr. was the opposite of Matt Hirschman, let's say. Uh, Tom Baldwin Sr. never wanted the race to come to him. He didn't want to save the tires and brakes. He was one of the most fierce, feared, aggressive competitors of all time. And it's great to see that paint scheme and that number seven NY carried on by his son, Tommy Baldwin, who's about to come to the stage to accept the owner's championship award. And we're going to stay right here to cover that for you because it is a very special night, not only for McKennedy, but for Tommy Baldwin as well.
for you. You, you can't tell these guys. Who wants to be the person to go down there and say, all right, guys, now we've got to cut it short. you got to get off, Steve. <laughs> you got to get, yeah. <laughs> these guys Move deserve <laughs> all the accolades and all the photos. You know, there are times when victory lane photos are taken, and you're thinking, what's going to happen with these? This is a photo session that every one of these crew members will cherish actual prints. Somebody's going to actually print these photos. These aren't just going to be shown on a phone. This is an event so significant. There's going to be eight by tens made of every one of these, and every guy on the team is going to have one in their garage, one in their office, one in their basement. This is truly a celebration of magnitude. So we certainly want to give them their due. And once again, the uh, the seven NY, the Tommy Baldwin racing machine, which tonight was driven by Blewett, will be coming to this stage as well. And we'll hear from Jimmy Wilson again from NASCAR as the owners championship cup will be presented here at Martinsville Speedway. And uh, that seven NY car brings back so many memories. Uh, uh, Tom Baldwin was such a fierce competitor that even drivers like Tony Stewart, who spent occasional time racing in NASCAR modified competition, Stewart will tell you that Baldwin was one of the drivers that he feared in only a handful of maybe seven or eight modified starts. Baldwin was one of the guys that drove so aggressively that even Tony Stewart would say, hey man, that's a little rough. <laughs> That says a lot, doesn't it? It does. And he was so <laughs> successful throughout his career. And now we get to honor his son with an owner's uh, championship hardware. And you know, we talked a little bit about 2023 when I mentioned that John McKennedy will be introduced as the series champion for the first time in his career when the spring rolls around. But you know, the Tommy Baldwin Racing team, it's going to be interesting to see what happens there. A championship for the owner, but three different drivers pulling into victory lane. You've got to wonder what that team has in store for next year. When you've won the owner's championship, there's got to be several drivers raising their hand and saying, uh, Tommy, pick me. I'll do the whole season. I'll do the whole season for you. I will. So it's going to be interesting to see how that team handles 2023 after scoring a championship of the owner's magnitude and what that does for the resumes that are no doubt going to flow in to Tommy Baldwin Racing for drivers who would want to compete in every event on the tour behind the wheel of the 7NY. As you mentioned, the start of a big racing weekend here for the Martinsville 75th anniversary celebration and uh, many, many more laps around this paperclip half mile still to come as this was the first of four nights of racing. Yeah, we're going to have uh, Friday. We'll be highlighted by practice and qualifying for the NASCAR Xfinity Series. And then Saturday, the Xfinity Series uh, takes center stage uh, with their main event. And then, of course, the Xfinity 500 for the NASCAR Cup Series on Sunday. We will know, we know the four drivers that are going to race for a championship in the truck series next week at Phoenix. We will find out on Saturday the final two drivers that will race for a championship in the Xfinity Series next week. And then, of course, uh, we still have a couple of spots up for grabs in the Cup Series. So it's, uh, we're going to decide who races for championships, NASCAR championships. We settle one championship here in the NASCAR Wheel and Modified Tour, but we still have a couple more to settle. It's a newsworthy time of year in the world of NASCAR. It's pretty newsworthy in Major League Baseball, too. You know, they're, they're doing some championship stuff there. But I think this NASCAR stuff is, as tonight has proven, far, far more exciting <laughs> than most any other sport when it comes to claiming a championship. Yeah, and what, uh, would, what would, would this be a, a, a ninth inning uh, walk-off home run? Or? <laughs> this would be a Super Bowl overtime, I think, <laughs> is what we saw tonight <laughs> with those final five laps. So, and again, and now the champagne spray. Again, a well-deserved celebration after 16 rounds races of unbelievable preparation and effort to keep the number 79 car so consistent all season long and again one victory only one victory for this team but they were able to finish so high up in the order so often that this champagne spray is for all of the hard work that they've done all season long and yes john that's why they sometimes hand out goggles before that happens <laughs> Hey, it's his first title. He'll learn. J Jimmy Wilson said this may be the first of several for McKennedy. Well, this is one of those lessons learned. When you're on the champagne stage, you take the goggles with you. He'll learn that for his second championship title, which could be down the road. But doesn't that, when they wear the goggles, doesn't that, isn't that kind of like, oh, yeah, it's I cheating don't know. a little it bit. Yeah, cheating. that's yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah. You gotta take it. You gotta take it like, uh, like uh, John McKennedy did. The big red machine in the 1980s in their locker room. They didn't have any goggles no. on Pete Rose and Joe Morgan no. and Tony Perez. No, they didn't have any goggles. You're right. 
The McKennedy team doing it the right way. Oh, natural with the champagne. And again, as this celebration comes to a close, we're going to bring the 7NY machine and Tommy Baldwin racing to the stage to celebrate their owner's championship as McKennedy and the 79 gang are leaving the stage now. And with, with the close 13 point battle coming into tonight, the owner's championship was locked up. The owner's was done. We knew that. We knew coming into tonight that Austin Beers had locked up the Rookie of the Year title for 2022, and we knew that Tommy Baldwin Racing had locked up the owner's championship. Uh, the driver's situation, of course, became historically exciting as the race moved along, but this championship that's going to be celebrated now by Tommy Baldwin Racing had already been locked up, and that's why we didn't really mention that machine uh, in terms of the point standings. We obviously talked about Jimmy Blewett, who was in a fantastic position to win this race uh, before that multi-car contact with just a few laps to go. So uh, it was only a race situation for Blewett and the 7NY team tonight because Tommy Baldwin Racing had already claimed the championship for owners, and we'll be celebrating that here momentarily. Yeah, Jimmy Blewett came down for that green-white checker in the second position outside the front row, really had a chance to go to victory lane and, and pick up that grandfather clock when all heck broke loose there out on the back straightaway. But, uh, and you made a really good point about that front row restart where McKennedy, for the sake of the championship, might have had to be more conservative. So sometimes the outside lane here at Martinsville isn't the place to restart, but with the mentality of McKennedy and the 79 car running for this exact title, it really did almost put Blewett in the right position where he could be more aggressive than McKennedy, and it, it was a good possibility that he was going to find victory lane to take that grandfather clock before the, uh, the incident, before that final restart. And boy, this is going to be talked about in replay played over and over and over again by fans of every driver involved in it, including the Eric Goodale fans who are going to go home and calculate the math and say, boy, if Goodale had finished two, three spots higher, the championship title could have been his because of what transpired at that last restart. Yeah, that last restart was not good uh, for Goodale. It, uh, it cost him a couple of spots and really with no time to recover from that. So it, <laughs> we knew that when you have four drivers within 13 points coming into a race that are biting for the championship, we knew we were gonna have something that could possibly go like this, and, and it certainly did not disappoint as Jimmy Blewett continues to sit up there in turn number three. Um, looks like he's gonna fire it up and head on down to the front straightaway to collect the hardware. And the TBR flag of Tommy Baldwin racing, held by Jimmy Blewett tonight as he makes his way onto the front straightaway, and he was one of the winning drivers for that team this season, uh, among a collection of three drivers who all found victory lane, and moving that car into position for our second celebration of the night for owner's championship, and boy, an outstanding restored vintage modified there on the front straight, joining in the celebration as well here with the 7NY machine. Look at that. Boy, that says Martinsville, doesn't it? Look at that old coupe <laughs> parked right in front of the seven of Tommy Baldwin racing there in victory lane. That's awesome. And once again, that you know, blew it able to finish this race. I mean, he kept that car rolling in spite of the damage from that incident where you know he could have been in victory lane, but at least got the car to fire up and come to the victory lane celebration here. I think it could have been a lot worse. What we saw was nearly catastrophic for a couple of teams, but I think all in all, the teams all drove away from that incident, and it could have been a lot worse than it was. <laughs> Team members, the boss, yeah, looking over the damage. Expecting the, yeah, <laughs> it's, it's championship night, but that's what an owner and mechanic will do right there. It's uh, championship night and ready for the celebration, but hey, what am I gonna have to fix tomorrow? What are we gonna have to order new for this car? Getting set to place the championship hardware on the stage and introduce to you officially the 2022 owner's champion of the Whelan Modified Tour. The restored Tom Baldwin coupe as part of this celebration, nose to nose there in victory lane. The tiger as he was known appropriately. Let's head back downstairs for the owner's championship trophy presentation. Ready, Tommy? Yep. 
Tommy, again, an amazing year this year. You put this thing together with three different drivers. Five wins during the course of the 2022 season amongst these different drivers. And this is really, really cool, the fact that we've got your dad's car and your car here, and with your owner championship cementing that Baldwin name into the NASCAR record books here as a champion. On behalf of all of us at NASCAR, the France family, we are very honored to have you as our 2022 NASCAR Wheeler Modified Tour Championship car owner. I can only imagine that your dad is smiling from above right now. Congratulations. And Baldwin there on stage to accept the honors, and I think the emotions are running very high as Jimmy Wilson made reference to Tiger Tom Baldwin's history with the NASCAR Modified Tour, and now Tommy Baldwin etching his name into the record books as well, and certainly high emotions there as Jimmy poses with your championship car owner for 2022, Tommy Baldwin. It was a, an exciting season, and you know, we talked about the championship contenders that among them didn't have very many victories to be the four drivers up competing for the title of driver's champion. One reason was because Tommy Baldwin Racing took five of those events with three different drivers. A very successful season for TBR. Yeah, don't forget the trophy. Trophy. You got to take yeah, the there we go. There now he's go. got to take it with him. And two <laughs> gorgeous cars in victory lane to pose with. There is your owner champion, Tommy Baldwin. Dean, thank you for joining us tonight. It your was a insights pleasure. were fantastic. And much more racing to come here at Martinsville this weekend. But for 2022, the NASCAR Wheeland Modified Series is a wrap. Owner champion, Tommy Baldwin, with his trophy. And congratulations again to John McKennedy. And we're going to go down to Jesse for an interview with Tommy Baldwin trackside. Tommy, walking away the owner's champion. This is so much more than just an owner's championship for you. This is a continuation of a family legacy. What does this honor mean to you? Yeah, I mean, it's uh, it's been a long time coming. You know, my dad obviously spent his whole life in uh, racing the NASCAR Modifieds and to, uh, to win the championship with the 7NY and uh, pretty much having one of the first Modifieds he's ever driven. He actually you know race this car here in the early 70s so it's pretty cool to bring it back and take the pictures with it and uh, cement the legacy of, of our name the Baldwin name and the 7NY number uh, I've always said you know you can win a lot of races you can do a lot of things but until you win the championship you know you you, you, you got to do that in order to cement anything so uh, we did it uh, with three different drivers and uh, won a lot of races ran up front a lot as you saw tonight and kind of got uh, hooked there at the end there but uh, yeah I was uh, Great for all the team. They work their butts off. You know, you, everyone's got to remember there's not many full-time employees on the, on this modified. It's all people that give up their their fun part of their lives to come and help help me and my family. And uh, they love it just as much as I do because they're crazy like I am. So um, to to get this championship, lock it up. You know, a race early uh, showed how really tough we were all year. And uh, here we are. Here you are, the owner's champion, and looking at these two cars in victory lane. What kind of emotions come to the forefront when you look at these vehicles behind me? Yeah, I mean, it's. I wanted to do this because I wanted to, to let everybody know from the beginning to the end, all the people that helped our family, you know, from the early 70s to now. It's been so many people that have went to war with, our, you know, myself and the family, no matter what I've done, modified the cup stuff. These are for all the employees that work with me, all, 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 the, guy, all the pit crew members, all, all Baldwin Automotive, of all my employees up there in Long Island. This is this is for them tonight. Uh, everybody to help my dad. It's it's just nice closure. Well, there it is. Your owner's champion, Mr. Tommy Baldwin. Tommy, congratulations. Thank you. Five wins this season for the 7NY, and they wrap up the year with an owner's championship. Thank you, Jesse Punch. Thank you, Dean Strom. Thanks for all of you for joining us as we put a wrap on the 2022 NASCAR Wheeland Modified Tour season. Congratulations to race winner Corey LaJoy. Congratulations to owner's champion Tommy Baldwin. Congratulations to John McKennedy, the 2022 driver's champion of the NASCAR Wheeland Modified Tour. Good night from Martinsville Speedway in Virginia.